Yeah, we're here. We're queer. It's uh, January, folks. I guess we're not doing dry January here, bitches. We thought about it. I thought about it. But then we both looked at each other and was like, we could have won. Yeah. That's exactly. literally how every bad night of ours ever started. <laughs> that's so true. We could have won. Yeah, that's Caught true. Cut us leaving the cellar at 6 a.m. Uh, you got that right. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's dry January, but just cocaine. That's dry, <laughs> right? Okay. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm back from Mexico. Yeah, look, the pictures were incredible. It's an incredible place. I couldn't place. believe you were on vacation. Like, Mark is so avoidant of any time off. Like, we all are, but, you yeah. know, I'm texting with him just like, oh, what what, are you, what what club are you at this weekend? What theater are you at this weekend? He just sends me a picture of him and May on, like, a drunk boat. Yeah, yeah, like, basically. Wow, all right. Yeah, like a booze cruise on and a then, canal. And then I thought, he's, he's, doing, a, he's doing a cruise. <laughs> no. I'm a boat act now. <laughs> I did do some bits on there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, crazy, crazy week. But I still did a show in Shreveport, Louisiana in a theater on Christmas Eve, which uh, was a big fight at the house. You know, she's like, you're, you're doing a show on Christmas Eve. I'm Why like, can't what? you do Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve is like a show night, I think. Well, Christmas, I get you there. take off. But Christmas Eve is like, it's like the night before Thanksgiving. It's got good energy in the air. For, That's true. Uh, but you're showing your Judaism here. I mean, <laughs> Christmas is a, it's a thing. It's like a woman with a birthday. It's all week, you know. And uh, plus, I got to get to her house. So I got to get to Boston. Oh, you did a show in Boston. No, no, no. I did a show in Shreveport. And then you flew to Boston on Christmas Day? Yeah, that was Ooh, the that was the fight. Yeah, I get why she's mad at you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got made it. It all worked out. So thank God. And I said, hey, we're going to Mexico for a week and a half. What That's the hell? That's how you get out of shit. I, pull, I pulled a thing where I booked something on Valentine's Day without telling my lady. And mm -hmm. she was like, you did that? And I was like, I'll spend the night, the two nights before with you. And she's like, all right. Okay. But you just got, but I don't think, I'm just like, oh yeah, that's not, you're not a fucking annoying person. You don't no. care about Valentine's Day, but they are women. Yes. And they yes. talk to their female friends. Yes. And they're like, what did, what did he do for you? Exactly. And it's like he, uh, <laughs> He's he's going to Texas for a gig, right? Not and, romantic. And then they're like, "But was he miserable? Because if he wasn't miserable, it doesn't count." Like, well, why does that matter? It matters. Yeah, women like you to suffer because that means it's real love, I guess. Is it? I I disagree. I mean, what's that old famous story where the guy got free flowers and he gave it to his wife and she was like, "Oh my God, thank you! You're the best husband ever." He's like, "Yeah, I got him for free. Can you believe it?" She was like, "Wait, what?" And now she hates the gift, but it's still <laughs> the same gift. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I love the old street joke. You ever heard the one uh, Gilbert Gottfried told it on his album? Great, his album, Dirty Jokes. Oh, that's a classic. They're all street jokes, but they're hilarious. Yeah. And he had uh, he had the line where he goes, "The guy is drunk at the bar. He pukes all over himself because he's so shit faced. He's like, oh, my wife's gonna kill me." And uh, the bartender goes, just put a $10 bill in your front pocket. Say yes! some other guy puked on you, gave you the money for the dry cleaning. And he was like, that's great. So he goes home and his, his wife's like, what the fuck? And he goes, some other guy did it. He put a $10 bill in my front pocket. She looks at it. She goes, this is a $20 bill. He goes, he also shit in my pants. <laughs> what a great joke. It's a classic. Street jokes have this weird uh, bad rep, but they're they're – they're really hard to write, and they're really smart. They have a bad rep because if a comic's doing them on stage, that's the problem. But like off stage, they're the best. Yeah, we like that's like that was a big part of our culture. Like, you got any jokes? Yeah. You know, two guys walking to a bar, a black guy, a priest, or whatever it was. Those oh, are the can we best. Get a bodega cat, can you get me that? Wait, what about oh, this? Oh, right here. Here we go. Oh, oh. I didn't see it. That one's got a, uh, one shot in it. Open them all. I was thinking we do. I've been more. on. A, I've been on a. Uh, sidecar kick lately uh, wow so I, sidecar that's I, a good one well you get sick of i was doing paper planes at home i was yeah. doing i'll do a boulevardier i'll do a manhattan i'll do just you know straight whiskey but every once in a while it's like you get sick you want to you want sure. variety you gotta well, what's in a sidecar can we pull up a recipe there google bitch it's really just this stuff cointro i guess is that how you pronounce Quantro. it cointro i'm trash <laughs> uh bodega cat whiskey it says and, uh, two ounce cognac, a third of lemon. You can do juice, a whiskey one though. You don't need to do cognac. A third of triple sec. Okay, triple sec. What is triple sec? Is that a liqueur? No. Triple sec. Yeah, it's like a. I think it is. It's what I was having before we got married. Triple <laughs> sex. Now it's once a week. All right. You had to liqueur. Right. <laughs> liqueur asshole. <laughs> that's that's uh, on Christmas. But yeah. That was a big thing. Anal. Remember you got anal for your birthday? That was like a cliche. That was like a, yeah, that was like the corny joke. But like, I, I never was into anal. I'm dude. not into it either. They're just so fucking miserable. And it hurts my ass. But, um, 
it's mi- they're miserable. It doesn't feel as good. It's not as wet. I, I don't really get the upside except for the the win. It's almost that's our flowers. You got to suffer. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the win is really yeah a great casino and uh <laughs> and a nice asian guy i know nice little dog too oh yeah winnie when she's back nice her... gucci threads there it's real louis vuitton it cost me 47k <laughs> no it's a little fake fur thing but i think it keeps her warm man it's, it's getting cold out there she's got the worst diarrhea outside i was with her for like that's why i was late she was Shitting for like tw- ten minutes. Jeez, you guys are one and one and the same. <laughs> Got to stop feeding her fajitas for dinner. <laughs> what is that? The drip? That's what the kids because she's got the drip. <laughs> nice, I don't drip. Know. nice drip. Nice <laughs> drip. <laughs> I've had that in uh, spring break. Uh, I had the drip. Anytime a woman's wet, I'm happy. <laughs> Dude, I, I so you were telling me you saw Saltburn mm-hmm. the because I, I watched. A lot of movies over the break. So did I. Because it's like, you know, there's a lot of good new movies out. All the kids are talking about this movie, Saltburn. It's oh, like, yeah. To me, it's like kind of a shit version of Talented Mr. Ripley. Oh, it looks beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's beautifully shot and, and the, the scenery. acting's incredible. Acting's great. That kid is, uh, he's a phenom. I know, but I could have done with uh, a little less cock. A lot of cock. A lot of cock. And, and That's like know. the new tits. It's the new tits. <laughs> You're right. Soder was saying to me last night how uh, I saw Dan Soder and he was like, you know, because he talks about his hair transplant and he was saying how it's like the new uh, fake tits. Yeah. Because you, you don't want to talk about it in front of your bald friends. Ah. You know? It's like, that's like your flat friend. And every time I see him, he's like, feel it. <laughs> I'm like, all right, all right. That feels real. Look at that. <laughs> I feel it. It's yeah. true. Um, he's got a bit about it. Maybe I'll give him that. I don't know if he does the feel it part. But, uh, yeah, the acting's great. It's beautifully shot. The cinematography yeah. is incredible. The the castle, you know, they always say the castle is its own character, you know. Yeah. But And I thought the mom was funny. She's fucking hot still, too. Rose Super Wind hot. Pike. Yeah. What's she in? Gone Girl. That's yeah. right. A ton of shit, though. She's in a ton of shit. She, she might have been my favorite character. She was hilarious, and that's like a believable type of character. But, like, I don't know, man. It's, uh, you know, I, I get the premise. It's like a, the kid is enamored with this rich world, but it was like, it almost felt like, this is going to sound like a burn, but like people who are really into Boondock Saints. <laughs> it's like, where they're like, where yes. they're like, it's almost like tried to be too smart and yeah. it just didn't feel that smart. It yeah. just, lo- it was like a, it was like a shiny, you know, it, it, the soundtrack was pretty fucking good, though. Soundtrack was that great. That song at the end, uh, Murder on the Dance Floor, whatever it is. That's oh, a, that's yeah. a great tune. Great tune. It, it was perfect for the ending. And I don't want to give much away, but yeah. the, I thought the sex stuff was so over the top. And I'm not a squeamish guy. You know, you can jizz in my, in my soup and I'll eat it. And I have. Yes. Chowder. But <laughs> I thought it was just like weird and unnecessary and didn't make sense a lot of it. And I'm no prude. It was trying to be like edgy. It, it was like. trying to be edgy. Yeah, like it's the, almost like when a comic comes out and he's like, "Are you offended?" And you're like, "You haven't even spoken yet." Yeah, right. It's and, like that type of shit. And it wasn't that hot. Like I don't want to give anything away, but the period scene, I was like, "This is weird." Yeah, uh, it didn't make sense. And the the, the fucking the grave. Jeez, uh, I'm saying too much, but <laughs> it felt like there were like no spoilers. He fucks a grave. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> and I, I liked that they went for it. I liked yeah. uh, the characters and all that, but. I just, yeah. I didn't see your other movie that a lot of people said was better, Promising Young Woman. I haven't seen that either, but I'll check it out because I think he's talented, the guy who made it. She. She. Cut that. I I turned to that person. Yeah. What's the doctor's, what's the doctor, what's his name? Her name? Uh, To me, it's just a movie about how angry short men are. (laughs) And I already saw Napoleon. Yeah. So... (laughs) Let's, uh, oh, here we go. You know what I? You know what I liked? Uh, did you see Anatomy of a Fall? No, I never heard Is of it. The staircase? It's it's no, but Basically, it's con- it's staircase? not the staircase. No. It's it's a French movie, but it's about a murder. But oh. it's about or is it? That's kind of the movie. Mm. It's a French movie, and it's about their. Uh, I won't give too much away, but the but the the gist of it is they're in this like the French Alps. It's beautiful looking, like you can see right there. Mm. A man falls to his death. And the thing, but then the examination is like, I think he was hit before he fell, and it's kind, of, and they have a Ooh. kid together, and they all blame the wife. Ah. So it's like, did she or did she not do it? How the son is dealing with it? It's very good, psychological thriller, very much. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll check it I out. I dug it, and it was, uh, 
I thought it was a really good movie. Well, you got my my asshole because I was watch. I watched a simple plan. How good is that? It's movie? It's so good. I, I I got the wife watching. And she's like, this movie's incredible. I know. It's so simple, and but yet it's so powerful. That, it, it was just like. I feel like that type of movie where you you find the money and it tears a group apart. Yeah, it could, it could be so predictable and formulaic, yes. but it remained like unpredictable. And I was yeah, like, what's gonna happen? I feel like every scene mattered. It was. Oh yeah, and I'm so glad you watched. I feel like we we have, we're on the same page. I feel like with a lot with movies, we just want a good story and and a good script. That's all I care about. Billy Bob was so good at it. He's so cute and dumb and likable. <laughs> He's great. Did you watch the Julia Roberts joint? No, what's that? The, the, is that the end of the world thing? Yeah. Leave. Leave the world behind, leave the world I believe. Behind. Yeah. How's that? Uh, I, I didn't love it. It took me two two sits to watch it. It stunk. Okay, Salakus hated it. I heard it was good until the end. Vitor was like... Vitor, we're on the road. He's like, you got to watch it. And I was like, all right. And then the next morning, he's like, it stinks. Like, <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> Yeah, right, I made us a sidecar. Well, there's a there's definitely a trend going on with like the world ending and all this shit in movies. Hey, so you. Uh, you can tell that's where we're at in, in our generation. Cheers. Here Happy we go, New Year, folks. Hey, yeah, yeah. look at this. You got a resolution? Eh, I don't know. Wow, that's damn good. That's pretty good, right? That is damn. Some you know, people put sugar on the rim, but I don't like. I don't. I don't I'm I'm good with the sour. I no like rim it. job. What? Yeah. A, it reminds me of a painkiller. You ever oh, painkiller? Yeah. Those are great. And there's also the other one, the penicillin. You ever one yeah, of penicillin, very similar. Yeah, it's like the scotch and uh, gingery. It's kind of good. It's good for a hangover. I mean, and yeah. uh, when I was in Hawaii, I'd wake up. I did like a week in Hawaii for one night. And it doesn't really work because <laughs> it's Hawaii. But, but did uh, you actually just do the gig one night and then? No, I think I did a, like a, a two-night gig and I, I went there for five days. Such a bitch of a flight. I know. But, and the time change, it's a lot. Oh, yeah. But, you it's know. It's funny. We, like, literally, we get gigs in Hawaii and we're the only people that we travel so much we fucking complain about it. <laughs> like, you true. have to go to Hawaii. I'm like, ugh. I know. I, I didn't go because I was like, I'm fucking 80 cities last year. I don't need a... I don't, you don't need, need to add because I was going to do it to route it with Australia, and I'm like, I'll just go to Australia. just go to Australia. It's nice to sometimes have a vacation when you're working and be like, okay, now I'm going to take two days for myself. Not I really. Yes, but yeah, it's t- you kind of have to do all or nothing. I think I agree. Although you get the tax write off if you do a gig. Oh, true. I don't know. Damn, I should have done that in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> you would have ruined the vacation. Oh, she would have hated it. You're just going on before that little Mexican wrestling match marked us five minutes. <laughs> El Comedeo. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know Brad Williams was there, too. But, yeah, I tagged him in that, by the way. I don't know, I don't know if he's caught that yet. He's coming uh, on soon. Yeah. Get a phone book. He'll get, <laughs> he'll get, this is his glass, actually. When he was, uh, <laughs> I'll get him a thimble. <laughs> yeah. But uh, how was the trip to Mexico, though? Was it fun? It was fucking amazing. It was a bitch getting there. Our flight got canceled. We missed a connection. It was, oh. a, it was a whole thing. It took like a day to get there. So we lost a day. Delta can suck it. Damn. We missed a connection because some guy left his bag on the plane. So we had to we had to wait for him to get his bag before we could board and then... We boarded half an hour late, and we missed the next fl- connection by a half an hour. That's it was insane. brutal. That's fucked up. Yeah. You know what bugs me now, Apeev, on these connect flights is when you're on the little plane, and you get off, but you can't put your stuff in the overhead because the, the plane yes, is so little. Yes, yes. So now you just have to wait, and it's always someone who doesn't know how to They're like, ah, I don't know how to get the door open. And you're like, I got to fuck another- I got a connection. I watched one guy just lose his shit. And it was like, I was like, well, I'm not going to do that. But this guy was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I was like, oof. I'd I know. Rather, I, I, once I'm at a, I was in Springfield, Missouri. I'm like, once I'm at a Springfield, I'm good. I was in Chicago. I'm like, I'm in a, like, you know, I could figure something out in Chicago. Yeah, for yeah. A night. But, I've been in Springfield three nights. I got to get out. Oh, completely. Fun for three nights, but at a certain point, I just, I just need a change of scenery. Yeah. You know? Well, that's the problem with the road is like Hawaii and Springfield are not that different when you're on the road. I know. As ho- as point. crazy as that is to say. But it's just like, I'm in a hotel room. I got to get out. I got to fly, whatever. Well, Springfield's a little different, but play the clip I just, I sent you. Uh-oh. Oh. Text. I text, did I not text it to you? Checking now. Oh, yeah, you just did. So, uh, this is, we're trying to kill a day in Springfield, and I was like, let's do some Missouri shit. Ah. So, look where I take Gary Veter. There no you way. go. Finally, Veter's in his element. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. That's good form. He's he was a good shot. He was very accurate. I'm fine. He was very good. Yeah. Whoa. I mean, from the back, you're like skinhead. Wait. Oh no, no. It's a make a wish. He's so happy. Right. He's like, I'm good, right? <laughs> yeah, we do. We use some, we use some crazy shit. 
How'd you like shooting? It was fun. It's not my. It's not like not my thing. But it was like I, I opened with a bit about it. it was like you know, shooting a gun. It, it, people like to trash guns. It's a lot like a baby. They're easy to hate, but once you hold one, ah, oh, that's good. You know? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> kind of fun, but yeah. uh, until it unloads on you. <laughs> uh, my kid asked me. I felt really smart the other day. He asked me, "Why do guns do this? Why do guns do this? Kickback, kickback." And like, I just thought about it for one second, and I was like, "Oh, I think I don't really know the answer." But I think because the gun wants to actually do this pullback. Yeah. But since your elbow is on a hinge, it goes up like this. Oh. Well, yeah, we used some, one you have to put in your shoulder. We used a big one. Yeah. But then, uh, dude, I fired the Colt 45, uh, Colt 44 too. No like, video? Dirty Harry. I don't know if I have video of that one, but damn, you pull back the you pull back the hammer because you don't want to – if you if you just sh- pull the trigger, it takes a while to pull and it's like all anticipation. So I pull back the hammer. So I just – but holy shit, I'm like boom. Oh, it's like, I see. It's pretty intense. How's that feel? Wow, yeah, well, that's a video. Yeah. Damn. Is it this, is that the one with the, uh, it's got the revolving bullets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where you push it out and they're like, don't do, don't just whip it in because oh, you're going to yeah. want to do that, but it's bad for the gun. I was like, ah, gosh. damn, that's in every movie. Is it a revolver? The Colt 44. 44? 44 Magnum, I mean, not the Colt oh, 44. Sorry, okay. I misspoke. Man, but they have all those guns there. They had like the little, they had like the little Derringer, you know, like, which I think of as like the cock gun and kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Oh, yeah. Where you know he's tied up and he's talking shit and he shoots him through his dick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look thing. at that fucking thing. That's a cannon. Dude, it, it's a lot. Woo. But they just have a ton of, I mean, it was like a fun way to kill a day. I was like, I, you yeah. know, not, it's not a thing I'm probably going to make a hobby out of. Yeah being a new york jew but it was it was a good time do other people do that like other countries do they shoot for recreation i'm sure parts but yeah i don't think i think america's got to be the the spot for that yeah i think that's what people don't get when they're trying to like you know control guns is like guns are fun it's fun to shoot fucking guns yeah you should speak at a school (laughs) (laughs) but there's a video there's literally montages on youtube of hours of people kicking back and like hitting themselves in the face oh, the gun yeah. goes flying behind well, them you think all the time like the way you hold it it's like you think it's going to be like a movie and it's i mean i'm a novice so i i'm sure people are listening like you fucking rookie but you're like you know uh i i thought i did pretty well for the first for the first uh first time but yeah we tried a bunch of different stuff just to uh you know the 22 was my favorite oh just, really you know, yeah it was just easy to yeah, you're no size queen. You like a, a little. Well, it has a long handle. Uh, you know, so it just I, it, the grip was easy for me. Yeah. Oh, you see, like it just there's millions of these. This guy's going. <laughs> oh, oh my god, that's got enough. Hey, hey. Yeah, well, you got to be safe. That's the thing too. Is like the guy's like he's like screaming <laughs> safety, and Vito and I are just like we're like pretending to like put it behind our back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really, but you know. Yeah, yeah. No, but we I did it once in Houston, and we got the AK. Just yeah. like all right, fuck it, let's go all out. And we had to get the guy next to him, next to us, like, we can't load it. And he was like, you fucking homos. And he had to I do know. it. And he had like a cowboy hat on. It was brutal. Yeah. It's it's harder than it looks because you're just like, I'll point and shoot. But you got to like. same guy. He's on the subway. He's like, I don't. And you're like, here, follow me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But yeah, I'm with you, man. I, I, I'm not into the big, uh, the big guns as much. I think the little ones are like more fun. For, maybe because I just watched too many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like detective movies yeah yeah you know you're just also you're just like go ahead make my day it's kind of fun you know yeah this is too much it's like it's too much <laughs> that's no fun you want to look cool and it and feels like a war weapon I yeah guess hunting i don't know but uh no no even that's too big we sound like asian women like, <laughs> you know just uh just give me like a, a glock and yeah. then you want to do that where it falls out oh, it's fun as hell that's a move yeah, you feel right like there. john wick in that moment yeah just falls out you catch it yeah or the uh yeah or the, you pull it back i fucking love that yeah it's funny because you go to these gun ranges and you're like i want to be john wick i want to be this guy i want to be james bond and then they go don't do this don't do that and it's all the shit that you want to do you can't do you're like don't get revenge fuck yeah <laughs> it's like going to a hooker they're like don't kiss you're like come on i want to kiss but yeah um so yeah that's fun but yeah mexico we finally got there and we had a great time. We did shrooms. We got drunk. Everything's cheaper there, which is fun. I got pesos. I'm throwing it around like the cartel. We went to the midget wrestling. We went to the the canals. We did uh, all the great restaurants. I mean, we had a blast. We went to the Soho House party, and uh, we got dolled up, and uh, Andy Warhol was the theme. So I put on like a crazy shirt, and she's all 
uh, what do you call it, see through. And Billy Eichner was and there. And then you got shot really young. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Billy yeah. Eichner, do you say what's up to him? Nah, he was in his element. He was he was looking great, by the way. I heard his movie's good. I love that show he did. Uh, Difficult people. That show is so funny, man. That was my plan was to go up and go Difficult people, but I didn't want to bother him. He had like a whole group of gays with him, and they were they were rocking out and everything on the dance floor. So I didn't want to. But yeah, he looks, Difficult people is funny as shit. Oh it was, yeah, like fast paced. Yeah. Punchy as hell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was cool. And uh, then, of course, last day, she got the parasite. What? Yeah, Montezuma's revenge. Damn. Shitting. When I say she shit 48 times in a day and throughout the night, she got no sleep. It was bad. <laughs> I'm going up to the, the pharmacy in the morning. She she got no sleep, just shitting. I just hear the, the toilet flushing all Ooh. night and her like, woohoo, God. You just you just slipped divorce papers under the door. <laughs> uh, and I went up to the pharmacist and I was like, wife, shit oh, bad, uh, toilet ruined oh, uh, I'm doing all this shit. And the guy was like, I don't, that, but that. They don't really speak English there, by the way. It's not one of those things. And, you know, they shouldn't, but I thought they would that, speak That's more. such an American comment. I know. <laughs> they should have spoken my language. Well, like, you go to Amsterdam and they can kind of go, right. uh, you want a beer? All right, here and you it go, is you weird idiot. it's closer, right? Yes, right, yes. Right. And uh, you don't speak Spanish. I don't speak any Spanish. I picked yeah. up a little since being there, but uh, I don't speak any Spanish. And eventually, after like 10 minutes of me going back and forth with like pouring out asshole and he was like, diarrhea? And I'm like, yeah, it's the same word. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I didn't know you guys had diarrhea. I figured that was an American term. But it's so common there that he's like, take this, this, and this. She took it and she was healthy in like half a day. She was back. Damn. So yeah, it's no joke. I mean, she was wrecked. What, what did she get it from? I think the water. I think the ice. That's crazy that you can't drink water there. You it's cannot so drink close. water. And it's, you can't have water. And it's you, a, a major country, 20 million people, no water. You got to do bottled water, filtered water. Well, I think so, their system's used to it. They can drink the water. No. I they can't it drink the They water? can't even drink it. It's such a fascinating place because you can't really walk around at night. You get abducted. There's a millions and millions of uh, disappearo all over the, these posters with their faces on it. There's millions of them. And you're like, this is good PR. Like uh, that's what it says. Disappearo. Mexican magician. Yeah. <laughs> I am Disappearo. I'll take your children and make them Disappearo. But yeah. He, he abducts him like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this your child? <laughs> yeah. But then there's there's no litter. I mean, it's beautiful. It's lush. The streets are clean as shit. I didn't see I saw two hobos in ten days. And but yet you get abducted, you can't drink the water. So it's like this weird opposite land. We don't really get abducted, but we yeah. can drink the water. We got yeah. litter and graffiti everywhere, but you know, you, you get I'll what I'll take I'm ours. I'll take I'll ours. take ours too. Yeah. I need that water. When you're hungover and you're like, oh, I gotta go out and buy a jug of water, it's it's a bummer. You gotta prep for it. You gotta prep. I'm doomsday in over here. Yeah. So that oh, was dude, weird. You know what, speaking of doomsday, you know that another good fucking movie I just watched? Uh oh. Did you see Ten Cloverfield Lane ever? No. I saw that. John Goodman. Tim oh, Robbins. Yeah, it's yeah, like, it's I a saw Cloverfield that. movie, but it's like end of the world movie, and a woman gets in a car crash, and they're in the suburbs. She, no, she wakes up in his basement, oh, and he won't yeah. let her leave because he's like, "We're under attack," and it's like, "Is he or is he not telling the truth?" It's pretty crazy. Another psychological. It's really good. Yeah, I he, forgot John about Goodman that. fucking rules. Oh, he's the man. Underrated actor. He doesn't get brought up as a great actor, but he kills it in everything. I feel like people think of him as a great actor. I, I King Ralph. Big Lebowski. Yeah, exactly. Fucking, yeah, Roseanne. He's a, Roseanne, he's great. Great. Uh, Inside Lewin Davis. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, babe Ruth, too. That's right, the babe. Dude, uh, yeah, what else? I mean, that's crazy, but she's feeling better, though. Totally fine today, but it was a, it was a rough road back, and her asshole is just blown out. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but we had a great time. The food's amazing. Maybe the best food city I've ever been to. What, what were you eating? <clears throat> I mean, we I kept pushing for the Mexican. I'm eating street tacos everywhere, She so she hated me. She's like, you're drinking cocktails all night with ice. I accidentally took a sip of water at one point, which was, she was like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I forgot. I never got That's sick. Right. So what do you, would you, what should you drink? Just neat cocktail? Just neat, like, whiskey neat, or something? Neat, and yeah, you can drink, like, a Jack and Coke, I guess, or you got to drink it quick, because that ice will melt, I guess. I don't know, but some yeah. places have filtered ice. It, it's a, it's a mind fuck. You can't relax because of the water. Um, but I was eating street tacos all day. I'm like, old Mexican here, lady. that's what gives you Montezuma's revenge. What? Right over there, the, the street tacos. Yeah, yeah. Like, you eat halal here. That's what fuck. that's what oh, fucks my life. I used to always you. eat that, like, 
50 whatever street, you know, those halal cars. Oh, yeah. Those are great. Incredible. But With that white sauce that's sitting around all day in the heat. You got that oh, right. Forget that. It, it will, congeals. It will light up your stomach. And then you ask for the hot sauce. You, Woo! That is some spicy yeah, fucking Yeah, I think that offsets uh, the white sauce. That, like, kills the bacteria in the white sauce. Mm. <laughs> Maybe. But also kills your, it kills your uh, stomach. It's, it's ISIS going at you in there. But yeah, we had a great time, and uh, I would go back. Like I always say, if a if I run over a kid on accident and I have to flee the country, where would I live? This is on my list. Really? I I mean, I hate the water. Everyone says bucket list, but there should be a run over a kid list. <laughs> yeah, like somewhere you can go or write a novel. You know, you go somewhere, you sit in a tiny apartment with a good view, and you, you, you won't drink. miss ice. I drank it all. You know what you could do? You could just have ice at home and you just you there get you like go. a bottle of water and do it in a tray, I guess. It's funny because they're both, they hate, they they can't do ice or, and they hate ice in Mexico. They hate both ices. <laughs> that might be something. All right, we got something there. I just thought of that. That's good. <laughs> I don't know. No ice and no, no ice. ice. But also, and this might be my ignorance speaking, it's such a beautiful place. It's so fun. There's so much to do. Why do people want to come here so bad? I'm like, if I was Mexican or Venezuelan or whatever, I'd just go live in Mexico City. Yeah. I mean, I know the American dream is this. There are some people, there are Americans who go to Mexico City, though. Oh, yeah. They, they, they're sick of us. But I'm just saying, just go there. You know the language. It's cheaper. It's, I don't know. I guess there's less opportunity, but. So in your fantasy, when you run over the kid and you flee to Mexico, <sighs> yeah. are you hiding out or are you kind of living in the open? Because you're kind of living... you're kind of recognizable. Yeah, but I'm out of jurisdiction. So I'm kind of living in the open. I guess. I feel like in Mexico City, they'd get you, though, right? Yeah, probably. You got to go somewhere, like, really, where they fucking hate America. Oh, Venezuela. Yeah. Venezuela could be good. Yeah, but I hear that's a shit show. I mean, every every country's got nice parts, I'm sure. But, like, dude, I just love... I, I go... I Look, I love traveling anywhere, but, like, New York, I just love. And I love America. Like, I, even the parts that are... Sure. Like, like, I love that we're just on the road every week, and you're just, like... I mean, it's fun to just pop into Philly. It's fun, yes. fun to pop it's into so Boston. It's so different everywhere. It's fun everywhere. to pop into San Diego, SF, like wherever. It, I, I kind of love it. You kind of don't really need to leave. I hate to say it. We got so much variety with like, you go to Portland, it's Oregon. To leave, though. Sure. But then you go to Miami. It's like night and day. But New great Orleans. city. Yeah, exactly. We got a little everything. It's yeah. fucking awesome. We got a great country. And I know we, everybody shits on America, but we are so much more diverse. Mexico felt very homogenous. It felt very mexican I didn't see a lot of black people at all. I didn't see a lot of uh, like Asian people. It would be a great traveler review to leave too many Mexicans. <laughs> just brutal. They got their one language. They all look similar race wise, right. and uh, but everybody shits on us. I'm like, we're doing great. We got black presidents over here. We got uh, Asian stuff, Chinatowns. <laughs> you know, and I, I know I sound ignorant, but we're we're know, way Asian, more progressive. Asian stuff is funny. We got Asian stuff. What chopsticks, lanterns. <laughs> Uh, sushi rolls, uh, udon, Hello Kitty. But yeah. yeah, very homogenous. Much like Sweden is very white and blonde. This is very, yeah. very Mexican. So, yeah. But great place. I, I would live there. Yeah, for sure. But uh, you think 2023, get the water thing going. What are we doing? Yeah. Your whole country's Flint, Michigan, basically. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. Yeah, good point. But yeah, highly recommended. And I'm, I told my agent I got recognized a lot there. Oh, a lot that's of, cool. A lot of we might be drunk, so I was like, Mexico City show, let's do it. So he was, wow. he's on it. Yeah, that could be fun. Oh hell yeah! What kind of hotel were you at? Uh, we got a place called the Park Boutique Hotel in Condesa. Highly recommend Condesa. It's right on the park. Kind of touristy, but fuck it. You know, I'm a tourist, what? and really pretty and cute. The hotels aren't aren't that luxurious, I'll tell you that. Were you uh There it is, the blue one. Were you uh with friends or was it just you two? No, just saw, us. Cuz you took a picture on the boat, it was with other people. Oh, she you actually saw. had a friend randomly there, so we met oh, wow. up. That's yeah. cool. So, it was How, it was how do you feel about awesome. that when you're in a relationship and she's like, "We're meeting my friends." How do you how do you feel about that? It's a little weird, but you're so kind of alone in a foreign country that you're like, yeah, an American, we can talk, we can hang out, we know each other, bring it vacation on. Vacation friend. Your vacation friend. Yeah. I saw a comic at Soho House, this guy Tushar. I don't know if you know him, tall Indian guy. I haven't yeah. seen that guy in eight years. We did comedy together in Atlanta. And then you see him and you're like, oh, we could shit on this and make fun of that and comment on this. And that was nice. That's a fun photo. Oh, nice. Yeah, they, they get a Just lot fuck of- fuck off, gringo. Well, during the <laughs> pandemic, a lot of people moved, a lot of Americans moved there and apparently fucked it up. But imagine if we did that. 
You know, it, it's uh, it's all flipped. You know what else is interesting about Mexico? And that's the last thing I'll say. I Their Mexicans it. are Mexican, meaning you go to Germany and you're like, who's your Mexicans here? And it's like, oh, the Polish. You know, like who fixes everything? Who does all the work? That's hilarious. And in there, it's just them. Yeah. And the landscaping is beautiful, which I know is a stereotype with Mexicans, but it's fucking great because that's the Mecca. Yeah. It's like getting a bagel in Israel. Yeah. You know, it's going to be good. The workers are the, the Chinese and the Mexicans. Yeah. You, you know, or the Chinese pizza. have the Great Wall. Right. You know, they make nice shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, don't bring the wall here. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, really cool. Worth going. Yeah. I'm hung over as shit right there. I'm drinking a Diet Coke, if you can tell. Coca Light, they call it, which you got to learn all this shit. But my well, they parents. Call a quarter pounder down there. <laughs> Royale with cheese. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, and funny, I'm texting you, and you're like, I'm in Missouri. I was like, oh, wow, Missouri. We couldn't even be in more different places. I, I, I You know, I made the most of it, though. I had a great time. And, you know, shout out to Chris, who runs the Blue Room. It's like, you know, I just booked up clubs that I wanted to go to for the next couple months to tighten up my hour and it's like it's helping it's definitely helping he's running a great club there he's like the mayor of that town it's amazing yeah he just runs everything and uh we had a, we had a blast man can i ask just, you a question about your act yeah i know you have your hour almost or yeah. you have it and do you add more stuff to it to see if this could go in or are you at just adding more for, for the next the round? good question a little bit of both i'm like if this fits cool if not i'll i can move something else out it's almost like you know you're seeing who's making the team yeah you know, you're like, all right, right, I feel like this stuff is is cooking right now. A lot of, of the hours, like, I could sweeten this part a little. I could maybe, like, I have an ending on a couple of stories. One of the stories that I'm, I'm telling, it's like, there's a huge pop, like, four minutes into it. Mm. And then it goes, like, probably five and a half, six minutes, and it ends funny. Yeah. But I'm like, do I do I try to get a better ending at the six-minute mark, or do I just cut that Ooh. and end at the four? Like you're making kind of technical decisions, right? Yeah. But uh, to me, this is the like the sweetest, most comfortable spot as a stand up. I'm dreading that building. Oh. This. I'm already thinking of it. It's I I just hate it, it's it's such hard. A, it's such a hit to your self esteem to just go up there and suck. I, I yep. feel it at the cellar when I'm working out, and I can tell when there's people there excited to see me, and I suck, and I'm like. I got to work out somewhere. It's yeah. devastating. You know, I got, I can't, I, I'm not going to do it if people are seeing me on the road. Yeah. You know? And then people who know you go, oh, I thought this guy was better than this. And that just kills me. It's it's like a girl being like, man, I heard you're great in bed and you can't get it up. <laughs> and you're like, no, no, I can do this. Yeah, it's a bad night. You got to let me work on it. Or I'm working on new dick shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, but. You you have a you have a little runway here. I have a little runway. I have the longest runway I've had in a long time. For good. sure. Good. So I'm trying to enjoy it, and uh, and you'll probably get a good 20 minutes, or at least a as long as solid. I have a good 15 to start with. I'm good, and then I'll figure out the rest. But like, I want to have. I, I don't want people to see me, and I don't on the road, and I don't have a good 40 at least. You know? Yeah, I feel the same it's way. Tough. It's uh, 40 is the minimum. It's getting tough because you don't want to. And you, every city you go to, you want to give them a good show. Of course. Like, it's not like I'm going to go. It's tough. I did every show in Springfield was good except one. And I was like, man, they were fucking a little slow. They were a little rude. Every once in a while, you'll like get a crowd where you're like, oh, you don't respect what we do. Yeah. And I could just tell. I try, I was trying. I was fucking killing. Like, not killing, but like doing well enough. I thought. I was throwing my heat. They weren't loving it. They, it was going well. For like, I don't know, 40 minutes or so. And then I, I have a chunk there where I'm like, I'm going to try some new stuff. I said, I'm going to try some new stuff. I'm going to close strong. You know, I promise. So, you know, I did like probably 10 minutes of new stuff. And it's, it's one will hit, one won't. And when one missed, uh, I said, oh, you know, got to try the new stuff. And he goes, I said something like, I got I to gotta try some new stuff. He goes, yeah, we can tell they're new. Woo! And I'm like, I've been throwing your heat. I don't yeah, know I know. But it's like the second you have like a fucking slip up, I'm like. People really feel like they can chirp now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and they think yeah. they know comedy too. Yeah. yeah, it was just one of those things where I was like, "This has been working every other show in every other fucking city." But like, hey, you're not gonna you're not gonna bat a thousand. Yeah, and you got to try new shit. I'm not gonna you know work out in another city, but every once in a while, you got to slip it in. Yo, yeah, for sure. That's the only way to 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 test it. Yeah. But do you let them know, or do you just quietly? I kind of ignored it. I was kind of like, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I, if no, no, I, I mean, do you let them know you're doing new? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. Sometimes, sometimes I'll slip it in to see if it fits a chunk, but I will find like a portion I'll block out to do new. What do you do? 
Uh, I kind of, I kind of pepper it in because I don't want them to know it's new. I want them to treat it as as if it's regular. Right. To see if it'll stand on its own. But yeah. The problem is when I do that, sometimes it weakens the other shit. Ah, true, true. So I think like if it fits, like I did that. I tried that gun joke I told you guys before in a other gun bit, so it worked. If I can see an opening for it, I'll put it there. But if not. You know. Yeah, yeah. It makes you wonder how we've ever built material. And yet we've built so much. What well, It's like we have an opposite problem now. Back in the day, it was like people weren't paying to see us. Yeah. Right? So we were working out in a room where people were giving free tickets a lot of the time. And you're like, all right, that's fucking hard, right? You yeah. Because you got to prove it. And then you got to write new shit. I know. But now know. it's like now people are paying to see us and there's an expectation. Yeah. And that's also presents, I mean, it's way easier than it was, but it, there's other challenges. Totally, totally. In the old days, it felt like you had a, when you were writing, you had a gun in your back. And if you didn't get a laugh, you got killed. You know, and now yeah. it's like, ah, there's no gun. I can, I can, I have a little more leeway to fuck around and try, but I don't envy you with that new stuff, but you got Three months. Yeah, I got t- to build. Now it. I got two months. I got two months. But uh, that's something. You know, it was it was good though. I got another movie rack for you. Oh please! Uh, our boy Ronan kept telling me how good uh, the holdovers. I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was great. I mean, Alexander Payne, killer. One of the best writer directors. Oh yeah, so good. The wife loved it. I loved it. We showed it to the family. They loved it. Yeah, it's just like a good, it's like an old school movie. Yeah, it's yeah. Like a throwback where it's like. Like a Dead Poet Society kind of thing. Better. I thought it was way better. Really? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't love, Dead Poet Society is kind of corny, I it has think. has good moments. Good it moments, good moments. But not, yeah, on the whole. Just some corny shit though. Yeah. It. There was a, what was that other one with Brendan Fraser? School Ties. Never saw it. Nazi what? Right? Is it good? Oh, I, I think it's like Jewish you would kid love it. Into like a, uh, a Young Christian Matt Damon. Waspy school. Yeah. 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 It's fun. And there's some Jew hate. He goes, he goes, well, let's come outside. We'll fight about it. Nobody will fight him. Yeah. A little uh, off off the, uh, not, not the Jewish stereotype. He's like this yeah. big, buff, scary guy who's like, you want to fucking go? Let's go. But, Frazier's a Jew? Yeah. Oh, I like that. And somebody put a swastika in his bedroom. And uh, it's a whole thing. It is crazy that he went from like being like an action star to a kind of heavy dude. Kind of heavy. He's the whale. I know, but that was fake. A lot of that was. Oh, fake. was it? Now he's just. I'm not so sure. Really? No, it was a. It was a fat suit, but he's still fat. He's not that big. Yeah, he went from like. Uh... Well, can you imagine if John Cena was just like, I'm going to be a fat guy now? <laughs> yeah. It would be weird. <laughs> of course, it, it's gradual, but yeah, yeah, look at that. It's not that far off. He this could play Dangerfield. Close. Holy shit, you're right. That's insane. <laughs> you're all right, kid. You're all right. All right. By the way, they're reopening Dangerfields. Did you hear that? Really? I did hear oh, that. Yeah, I did yeah. hear that. It's a City. cool room. Good comedy club really seems to care. <laughs> Even his tie's loose, but that might just be the weight. <laughs> he's fucking great, though. Oh, great actor. Great actor. He's I in... heard he's a cool dude. The, uh, my, oh, really? my agent's boyfriend's like a hair guy. Uh, and he and he works with Gerard Butler and Brendan Fraser, and he's like goes on and on about how they're like the two nicest. Oh, guys. really? Yeah, George in the Jungle. I remember that one. Oh yeah, he was hot in that. He was fucking ripped. And I think he was in the Mummy as well. Oh, he think he was carrying a, he was carrying an action <laughs> franchise. Uh, I guess so. And Encino Man. Oh yeah, don't forget Blast from the past. He was in some st- dude. What was the one with Elizabeth Hurley where she was like, oh insane. man, was she hot? God, she was hot. She She's had a still run. hot, still hot, still looks great. She's still posting bikini pics in her fifties. Mm. Wow, yeah, Hugh Grant was all in there. Yeah, Hugh Grant, I don't get, but Hachi, women Hachi. like him. She's five either. years old. You know what? You know what you don't get it because it was like the cutesy bumbling, like oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. yeah. He, like it's like he, his his personality was like he was always rushing home to take a shit. Yeah. And for some reason, women <laughs> yes, found that yes. charm. He's like, oh, I just got oh 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 oh, I shit myself. <laughs> That's true. He, he, it was something about him that was like the and also like those chick flicks sucked. I mean, I'm sorry, Notting Hill is. I know it's a chick uh, flick, but it sucks. Yeah, love yeah. actually sucks. About a boy's all right. That's a great movie. Yeah, and great book. Nick Hornby, man. Hornby. Yeah. Fucking, killer she's making me hornby but <laughs> she's um fucking hot that's yeah, he, crazy that's crazy uh, she's incredible 57, 57? Yeah. come on i mean that's defying science that's insane yeah, yeah. let's see how body positive we are if yeah. you're attractive um, <laughs> uh yeah well i don't get it you know they say don't objectify but if she's fat and we're like hey she's hot it's okay to objectify 
funny how that works. All right. It's not consistent. It's not consistent. Is but- Kurt Rambis your backdrop? <laughs> there it is. Why is Kurt Rambis your backdrop? Kurt Rambis. Look at, Look at those arms on that guy. They're like he fucking was a, noodles. He was the goon. He was the enforcer. This oh, dude's really? a goon? He, he was tough. Really? Uh, Are you kidding me? Where is no, he from? brought him in play. to like beat up players. Really? He wasn't a skill. Look at him. You think he was a skill guy? <laughs> he was uh yeah, he was on. He was like what they brought in to beat up Bird and McHale. Wow, in the, what? In the 80s. Yeah, he was like the, uh, you know, the Lakers had like sick. You have skill guys like Magic Johnson and Byron Scott and and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You needed, and then you had like you know Michael Cooper, who was like a tough guy, yeah, tough defender. You had him, who was like a tough guy, and then you had like, uh, you know, oh yeah, goon. By yeah. the way, back to uh, Hugh Grant for a minute. He hooked up with a trans woman, oh, a hooker. She yeah. was trans. I thought so. No, I, I think I think that was Eddie Murphy. I think. Oh, and, that, it yeah, was yeah, a, yeah, and it was yeah, alleged. Yeah. I'm not. Oh. I'm not trying to pull an Aaron Rodgers here. I thought it was a double trans. <laughs> I'm not trying to pull a, pull a up. Pat McAfee moment. <laughs> pull it up. Uh, When's that list dropping? By the way. Well, that's what I was getting oh, to. This was vi- this saved the Tonight Show. This brought the Tonight Show. It wasn't from a num- trans hooker though. Oh, it wasn't. Hooker. Do you hear a Tom oh, Arnold story right. about That's this? No. Tom Arnold was shooting a movie with him. I forgot what movie, but he, the story he would t- was telling where they were there, you know, the whole time he was like, let's hang out. Like, you know, let's, and they became buddies on the movie. And then he was like, Hugh, like, let's, let's hang. And he's like, oh, you thought we were real friends? Like, we're move, we're film buddies. Mm. We're, like, we're shooting a movie together. Oh, and then he got busted for the hooker thing and it fucked him. And he was like, are, are you available? And he goes, oh, we're not real friends. Oh. So he got him back with it. Oh, damn. But he had just admits it. And this this brought the show from like number he three to number one. Letterman for a minute. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for a minute. I think, I think oh, in perpetuity. For the rest of the run. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. He's even doing. Let oh, me start with I'm so I know. He's bumbling. <laughs> what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great opening. He's so charming, even after a hooker. I don't, I, I, I don't say that. I don't say that to be clear, but I think among most people going. What? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's uh, it's uh, it's not easy. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, the thing is, um, I, I, people give me tons of um, ideas on this one. I keep reading new, you know, psychological theories and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> You know, I was under pressure, or I was uh, overtired, or I was uh, lonely, or my, I fell down the stairs when I was a child, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> but I, um, uh, you know, I, I think it would that would be uh, bollocks, really, to, to hide behind a, right. uh, something like that. You know, you, I think you know in life uh, pretty much what's a good thing to do and what's a, b- a bad thing. And um, uh, I did a bad thing, and that, there you have it. Did he, though? This is a scandal. You you hooked up with a hooker? This is a scandal. Well, it was a nineties well, scandal because he, well, he cheated on his girl. Oh, it's, it's public. I mean, oh, I didn't know it was no, a cheat he, thing. He was dating Elizabeth Hurley. Yeah, why is that my business? Because it's a tabloid story, and he he's a, like playing a likable leading. That's guy. what it is. He's the okay. cute. He guy. He has to do this uh, for women. Men are like, yeah, I mean, it's okay. bad, but we we don't give a shit. Men aren't the ones buying to see. Yeah, to see the Inquirer, movies, unless they're you know. Yeah. Unless their girlfriend or their wife is like, I want to see the new Hugh, Hugh Grant movie. You know? And then ladies always say, he had Elizabeth Hurley at home. Why would he get a hooker? And you're like, ah, you don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> it's different. He it- had a steak at home. Well, sometimes he'd go out for takeout Chinese. <laughs> yes. Love Chinese. <laughs> Very good. No, but it was, uh, yeah, I mean, she's ridiculous. She's gorgeous. But you don't know what's oh, yeah. going on in people's lives. You don't know, like, <laughs> is he next to, who is that next to him? That's the prostitute That's the he hooked up with. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, I'm with the women now. <laughs> uh, she's good. She's all right. Let me see. Zoom in. Well, it's just the opposite of Elizabeth Oh, Hurley. she's not bad. Yeah, it was, yeah. You, it was zoomed out. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. It's opposite. Yeah. Oh, it sucks that she went down, too. Or maybe this helped her career. Propped her up a little bit. The like, prostitute? Hey, I'm the Hugh Grant prostitute. Come on. <laughs> he was a leading man. Remember remember that time I nearly ruined his life? <laughs> yeah. 1,200. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> you do that for you? It's like the Chappelle joke. You ever, you ever suck someone's dick? That's so famous that now you're famous or whatever it was. Don't yeah. That Lewinsky. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, well, I, I better be Lewinsky with all the Clinton allegations going out there. Oh, let me yes, <laughs> there you go. This is all we had before P. Diddy and R. Kelly and and, and Epstein. This was it. This was the the top of the heap. Here's for my scandals. question. Okay, here's my question. Clinton, it seems, did. I mean, look, we can all assume he's got questionable judgment at this point. Sure, we we, we know that. 
Is Trump in there too? Is my question. Uh, well, they they were definitely buds. That's was the it? closest the right and left are going to come to <laughs> yeah. coming together. Right, right. Trump and uh, Clinton. Well, on the flight logs. I don't get why this is such a big deal. So pedophilia. I think there's something different. There's a... well, I don't think it's all pedophilia. You I think, think it's just he, they, they got a ride. It, if, if ten years ago he went, you want to get on my plane? We're going to Cleveland. I go yes. So I think you're conflating two things. Okay. I think there is the flight logs, which has been released. You can see those. Those are online. Yeah. Okay. This is the client list. Oh, client list. These Thank are you. People who he had services for. So oh. Like people got J-O'd in some island somewhere. Got it. That's all I needed. No one has explained that to there me you yet. Go. Okay, I couldn't put that together. All right, client list of yeah. meaning list of people who are paying Massages, to hook up with yes, yes. creepy shit teenagers. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's got it. Bad. Okay, well, this is good. I'm back on board. That's why we want to see the list. All right, not since Schindler has a <laughs> oh list been God. this uh, <laughs> exciting. Two very different lists. Yeah, <laughs> one good, one bad. Well, well, hey, we've all you know we always wanted to be on comedy lists. We're glad we're not on this one. Yeah, we, we were never on Variety's top 10. No, no. But we're going to see Epstein's top 10, hopefully. <laughs> that It's crazy like to think about. I mean, we had Lewis Black on here talking about. like he's, He had told an amazing story about going to Epstein's place like 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. Who the fuck he was. Just some rich financier who liked comedy. Yeah. I saw, by the way, I ran into Bobby Sladen in, in uh, what? LA. What? The Pitbull? Sl- yeah, and Bobby Sladen goes, uh, I don't know him, but he came over to me. He goes, I saw that story, a true story. He was a very nice guy. Whoa, yeah. wow. Uh, power of the internet. Yeah. Got to Slayton. I didn't even nice. know he had Wi Fi. <laughs> it's nice to see people confirming Epstein stories. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your tweet today, but I didn't uh, watch it. The Epstein's pilot. What is yeah. that joke? Uh, I don't remember how it goes. It was, I, I can't. It's like an old bit. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Do you yeah. want me to look it up? Sure. I don't remember how it goes. But uh Oh, that's you posted the oh you're getting in the Epstein. It's topical. Algo. Yeah, it was top I have a guy running my shit, so it's like uh No, it's higher up than that. You're right here, right? It should be That's the letterman. Maybe I pulled it? I don't know. Uh oh. No. Well, what's up with that car? Sorry, I don't look at Twitter too much. These are old uh, ones, dude. Oh, oh, okay. I thought Jeez, that was that's like an old one. Well, I got to make a shout out while we're uh, talking it. about stand up to Sam Talent put out a new special. I hear he's really funny. Oh, dude, this Did you guy watch is it? so funny. Yeah, I watched it. It's hilarious. I it's quick. Check it out. I mean, talk about punchy. Just boom, boom, boom. He's murdering. He's murdering in like minute negative. He's murdering in like 30 seconds. Just bah, out of the gate. And it's so fun and well shot. And uh, I hope I hope this blows him up because he's one of those guys that's like way overdue. Maybe maybe if he's in the, if he's in town we could have him on. I'd love to. I'm a, a total cunt because I typed in Samuel Twitter and this is X of course. So if you type in Samuel Twitter, oh, it takes you back two years. How about that? One of one of his quotes, one of the pilots' quotes was uh, he goes, "Every uh, underage person I saw on the plane was with either a, a parent or an adult." <laughs> Like those are those are two pretty different things. Uh, <laughs> I if I showed up to smile. a playground and I'm like, is that your son? I'm like, it's a kid. Let's. That's a good joke. Let's not go into detail here. That's good That's joke. An old, I, yeah, it's hard to write Epstein jokes. I feel like they're just. Like, yeah. It's like such a dark premise. No one wants. So you got to find like a another angle in. Right. Right. But uh, yeah, man. I mean, that, it's like this guy staying in the news forever. It's like the the getting caught, the suicide, right? Jelaine Maxwell, I know the list, and it's, there was a James Patterson book about him uh, before this. James Patterson, the writer, was sure. was his neighbor in Florida. What and he hated his guts because he knew this shit early, so we wrote a, like a takedown book of him before any of this. Whoa, it's crazy. Bill Gates said, or Bill Gates' wife said when she met him, she was like, "This is the scariest guy I've ever met." Like, she just felt it immediately, like, evil personified. Damn. And then she's like, my husband's hanging out with this guy, and now they're divorced. <laughs> so there you go. Damn. I wonder if if Bill Gates is on that list. I mean, I... Oh, I guarantee he's on there. On the client list? I'm going to go yes. All Throw right. it out there. Why not? I'm, I'm not an IBM cut to, guy. Cut to our studio being shut down due to a lawsuit. <laughs> I'm an Apple man. <laughs> I don't use Microsoft. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's the book. There you go. And he had a couple docs out. What's just Lane up to? I mean, she's in prison. She, oh, she is yeah. on her heels. Yeah. Oh, she got twenty years. That's right. Wow. 
That is tough. I wonder in like 10 more years if we'll get the killer. Because shit just kind of tends to come out in the wash. killed him? Yeah. Yeah, that's like, I'm not a huge conspiracy theory guy, but that's one where I'm like... Cameras weren't working. Cameras yeah. aren't working all of a sudden. The I'm, guard fell asleep. It's like, yeah, come on, you come on. Break. Yeah, I'm that's not like a out of a bad movie. Totally. Right, you right. see the guard like dozed off, you're like, yes. <laughs> exactly. So, we'll see what happens. Cause I'm with you. Be, I think I think this is one of those things where you're like, it's gonna keep unfolding. It is crazy. Bill Clinton is a is a bad person. Poon hound. Pull up the Norm Macdonald. I mean, he did some clip. good for sure, but he also is clearly a bad person. Well, he seemed like a cool guy. Saxophone. I tried marijuana <laughs> once. I did not have sexual. I mean, he was a he, he was, was entertaining. As fuck. So smooth. Little Rock, Arkansas, baby. Well, that that's what those were like. Those old school Democrats who could like connect with the South. Yes. You know, uh, he was also against abortion and gay marriage but it was the 90s <laughs> well yeah in the 90s that would probably be this is it oh, no it's way. it's a little long but if you can find it norm comes out of the gate and he talked about how bill gates killed a guy or bill clinton killed a guy yeah it's funny and i've seen this this it's funny how much the view has changed they're like the, easy uh, norm you can't uh, say Democrats things like that well, and now the view's all yeah but go. i think they, i still think they wouldn't say shit like that maybe who's never said they would Oh, this is That's great. Steal the election from the uh, the winner, you know, but who knows? <laughs> they hate him. <laughs> you love George Bush. Bush. I love George Bush, man. He's a good man, decent. You know, uh, none of this. <laughs> you love George Bush. Uh, uh, he's, uh, you know, I got he's the not a uh, uh, liar, a crook, murderer, or anything like that. So oh, it'd be shit. good to get the. See, I, I don't. I think we should get the homicide out of the White House. Oh, here it we'll comes. Get like a, uh, a fresh start, because we don't want any more murderers. I think yeah, we, we should just go on to the next question. Oh. <laughs> yeah, George Bush never murdered anyone. <laughs> His dad was like a war criminal. Yeah. Not criminal, but war Inside hero. Side job. Yeah. Oh, Clinton, he Norm murdered a, a guy. Dude. Yeah, you know, yeah. Not, yeah. Not, yeah. Not, you're not allowed to put out no oh, yeah. accusations with that. That's a little too far. That's the way it does. Let's just, yeah. Let's just... They were pretty hot and heavy. Who's that? No, uh, Norm and L. McPherson. What? Yeah. I remember he was on Howard Stern. This is going to sound make Norm sound bad, but he was on Howard Stern, and he's like, all these women were calling in, like, Norm's so hot, and, and uh, Howard Stern's like, all these models want to date you. And he goes, well, I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> he's <laughs> like, we could just funny. have sex. That'd be great, but I don't want to, like, hang out and get dinner. And uh, I remember being a kid, like, oh, this guy's awesome. But, yeah. yeah models he also, do have bad personalities. He must have some serious riz. Well, he, he also died scanner. alone in, his, with his, uh, in the studio apartment with his mom. Oh. Who? Norm. No, he didn't. Yeah, yeah. Well, he died of cancer, but he lived in a studio apartment in L.A. But he liked it. I mean, that's how he wanted to live. And he's got yeah. a son he likes. There we go. Oh, no. Yeah, no one was great. I mean, uh, shit, dude. Yeah, talking to models. It's tough. It's rough. And I'm sure women have that with, like, they think this rich guy is super sexy, but I'm sure he's a fucking wet blanket as well. You know? I don't want to talk to some zillionaire guy. Who's not that interesting? If you're dating someone for one reason, yeah, it's the, the way to put it. The other reasons are gonna bum you out. Better way to put it. I, yeah. I went on a, a couple of dates with models, like single phase, just like using Raya, swiping and shit. And holy shit, man, they were they were tough. Oh yeah, I, I remember bet. seeing this girl walking. I was like, man, she's like gorgeous. And then we were talking. I was like, oof. Yeah, it's just not. It's not going to go anywhere. I mean, I can make, you know, we're entertainers. We could, like, kind of be silly and, and turn it on, whatever. But at a certain point, you're kind of like, yeah, I don't think this is going to be good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a ball against a curtain. It, yeah. it, it can't go on. It's it's not going to work out. They, yeah. and, and men get mad at women. They're like, I saw a woman posted something like, I won't date a guy unless he's got this much in his bank account. And all these men are like, you're so fucking shallow. And you're like, well, we're the same way with looks. That's just what they like. Right. So, like, you can't really knock them. But... You know, it's got to be hard to date and have a conversation and connect for on either front. I, I love a tells bit about. I saw a girl say, uh, "You know, ten inches or don't even message me or whatever." <laughs> and he goes, "Oh, you need enough to shut down a school." Uh, <laughs> oh, Dave. Come on, that's the king. Gold. We got to have a tell on here soon because he's got a special coming out. Ooh, Ooh finally! I know he hates doing podcasts, but hey, this will wake her up. Hey, there you go. What is that? Treat. Some little, heroin. Uh, a little fentanyl there. Like See, uh, Mark, uh, you were on vacation. Did you have any new bit ideas while you were there? Did I got a to ton you? of ideas. Hit and me. I got some peeves. Ooh. Uh, give, me, give me both. Well, let me do a peeve first because we usually end on the bits. Um, 
The lady does this one, and other people have done it, but she was doing it all trip. What is that, chocolate? Yeah, she loves chocolate. No, it's not chocolate. Oh, kill the dog. Oh, my God. You scared me there. A little dog treat. Well, I know you're a new dog owner. I didn't know <laughs> if you knew about the chocolate thing. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to start with a 16-year-old dog. She might be 17 now, dude. She's fucking old. Well, she's on the client list. <laughs> 17. She, uh, an older lady came up to me on the street, like very old, and she goes, oh, she's so, I, I hope I make it to that age. I'm like, you won't. She's fucking 17 and do- you'll be long dead. Wait, what is 17 and dog? 17 times 7? I can't even. Yeah, yeah I can't really either. Much. This is how it was in Mexico with the pesos. I was like, ah, just take it. Take it all. What is 17 times here. 7? Working it out. 17 times 7. It should be like 105 or something? Or 119. Hey, one there you go. Off. Jesus Christ. Oh. Yeah, that's that? fucking old. Better than I had. All right. What's your peeve? Okay, one peeve is uh, when you get mad at somebody for not doing something and they just scream that they're actually doing it. You know, like uh, she was doing a thing. I can't remember what she was doing. And I go, hey, hey. Uh, oh, what was it? Shit, hold on. Oh, I was like, uh, grab the remote and throw it to me. And uh, she just wasn't listening. She was in her phone. And I was like, hey, you're not listening. Grab the phone, grab the remote and throw it to me. And she's like, I am. And then she threw the remote to me. And I'm like, well, it's been four minutes of me going, throw me the remote, and you can't just say I am when you're not doing it. It's like, uh, yeah, what hey. What is that? Why, why do people do that? I don't know. It's weird. I'm like, hey, you got to, hey, can you answer me? Or like, hey, oh, this is a big one. When you go, we got to leave right now. We got to leave. And they're like, I'm, I'm leaving. And you're like, but you're not. You're just That's doing other one. stuff. I, I once dated a girl who, it was like right when I signed with William Morris and I was in L.A., and they were like, you want to go to the Lakers game tonight? And I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah. You know? And then she's literally Get getting up. ready for so long. Uh-huh. It was like, it's like a bad, it's like a, like a bad sitcom where I'm like, well, it's the first quarter's over. Right. Not there, like the second quarter, I'm like, thanks. Exactly. Glad you got your fucking uh, mascara on. Yeah. Are you yeah. ready? We yeah. missed Kobe's last fucking season. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, that was it. She wasn't, I was like asking her a question. She wasn't talking to me. And I was like, hey, why aren't you talking to me? She goes, I am talking. I was like, but you're not. That's why I brought it up. So yeah, that, they're just they're lying to you. They're lying, weird. But I'm like, I have proof that you didn't because that's why I, I asked you to do it. You know, yeah, it's gaslighting. It's gaslighting, but in their that mind, is the definition. Everyone misuses gaslighting, but that that's is like the, that's gaslighting. I guess so. But if she's even convinced, she's like, no, no, I'm talking. I'm talking right now. I'm like, but you weren't. What I, you know, so that that's annoying. And then the other one is these garbage cans in New York drive me crazy. Pull it up, Sally. Oh, you couldn't find it. What, oh, which kind is it? The is kind it pull we, ones? the pull one. I hate the pull one. Hate the pull. I'm not even a germaphobe, but I'm like, I don't want to touch this nasty fucking handle. Well, for me, it's not even that. It's the uh, the, the NYC something or other. Hold on, I'm see if I can find one here. They're all in Midtown. Damn, I don't see it. The pull one. Yeah. I hate the pull ones. Maybe there's. Why do you hate them? I hate them because I always have like a pile of garbage in my hand, and then you gotta get a claw out, pull it, and then it doesn't fit because the pull <laughs> why, thing why is so long. Why do you so always long. have a pile of garbage? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got like a big to go thing, you know. Like you don't a, have a shoot in your building. You fucking. I'm on the street. I'm saying I'm, I'm eating a right. pizza box. That's it. That's it. That motherfucker right Those there. Suck. At least I got a kickstand on that one. Yeah. But those drive me crazy because. No, they're the worst. There's like five inches of plastic before it actually gets to the hole. And yeah. they seem more difficult and more expensive than the classics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, this, we just sound like old dudes who are <laughs> like, things were better <laughs> when I when I was in, when I was young. I'm gonna shoot a video of me holding a Chick Fil A bag that's this big, and I'm gonna pull it out and put it in. And it never fits. It's all. It's all. It's a fucking mess. Dude, all right, that, you got a peeve. Wait, wait. I, I got a peeve. I got one when. Uh, you ever have someone when they're where you're like texting and they're like, "Call me right now." Oh, I and hate you're that. You're like, "Oh, I," and, and then you call them. And you're like busy. You're like, I call them, and then they just ask you one thing. Nah, uh, I'm like, "Well, you could have just texted that one thing." Right. Yeah. You know. That's crazy. This is about Pam Loshek, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Famous New York. <laughs> call publicist. me right now. Oh, all right. Then she's like, "Can you do this show tomorrow?" Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you could have texted that. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, you ready for a bit? Oh, can I do a quick peeve? Well, please. Yeah, uh, no, this is, this is my impression, real quick, this, this is my impression of Pam. Call me right now. Okay, what's up, Pam? She goes, Dr. Drew is on hiatus. 
You couldn't have text that? Wow. <laughs> I didn't I didn't mention I didn't ask about it. Uh, yeah. You brought it up. Uh, yeah, 9/11 I'll give you. Call me right now. This plane's going into a building. Holy shit, that's insane. But Dr. Drew is on hiatus. The hiatus is the definition of time off. We have plenty of time. I know, we can figure this out. Uh, what, what do you have, by the way? Sorry. Oh, it's that. when you're in a bar situation and you have like a funny line like you just said uh that's why he's on the client list like something yeah. like that. And someone's like, "Did you just come up with that?" It's like, no, 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 I fucking wrote that in ah, home. I that's, brought a it here. that's a good one. That's a good, that's a good one. I hate that. Uh, no, I've been workshopping, uh, hoping I could slide in a, a comment that you would maybe say. Yeah. yeah of course. Right, that's right. insane. <laughs> I knew the scenario would play out exactly like this. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I write shtick like this is Carson in the 80s right, for right. our hangouts. Jesus Christ. By the way, Pete Holmes was on panel on uh, Kimmel. I don't know. Love him or hate him. He killed it. It was really like a, like a oh, this guy's a panel guy uh, pan- moment. It's hard to kill panel. Too. Panel's a whole I'll different animal. Out. A whole different panel. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, see, this this is my peeve in Pam language. Call me right now. I am calling. But you're not. <laughs> you're not calling. We're texting. That's that's the point. Yeah, if you can I text, hate... I am calling. You're not calling. Exactly. I don't like, uh, Thank you. like a sense of urgency when it's not called for, basically. Also, Good way to put the it. person who will like send you... 14 texts and you haven't responded to one yet let me catch my breath and read the other 14 yeah, i know i know exactly especially when you're not in a conversation at the time i understand if you're talking someone's like going going but right like, but if it's just out of nowhere and they just keep going you're like all right this is yeah a lot that's too much you got to relax because they just text as they talk you know and you're like oh well i gotta read all this oh how about the voice memo people oh sally are you a voice memo person? I feel like it's voice an LA guy. thing because they're driving and they're like, I'll just leave a voice memo. Yeah. And you're like, cool, it's been three minutes. But sometimes it needs <laughs> inflection. Sometimes when you leave a text, it's like, this is flat. It, it, it sounds editing. like a voice memo d- defender right here. He is. I am. I'm and, an apologist. Are you well, an apologist? If we're editing something yeah. and you text like, line three's got to go where you say, quote, blah, 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 it is a lot to write. Yeah. So no, I go, get that. That's fine. Line but three's got to go. Yeah. It's Some easy. people will just go for like three minutes. That's the problem. That's the problem. It's like a voicemail where they're like, oh, is there anything else I need to say? And you're like, come on. I get that some people don't like looking at their phone, but like, you know, it's it's a lot. Yeah. It, you know what the voicemail thing needs? It needs the the old answering machine like, Boop! Cuts you, you off. You're out of tape. <laughs> yeah. That's good. How about uh-huh. people um, when you're talking to them on the phone and they're at the fucking deli ordering? Oh, yeah. Where you're like, in the middle of the conversation, you're like, hold on. I'll take the yeah. chopped cheese. <laughs> yes, it's like, yes. why am I on the phone with you while you're ordering your chopped yeah, cheese? Uh, you know who did that? Later. You know who did that this morning? Who I saw pull that? Pam Loshak. Alec Baldwin. Whoa! Whoa! I'm at my, I'm at my uh, corner store. He was at least he put the phone down for the order and then like walked to the corner because wow. I, like, I was like, who's this husky like big guy? And I was like, oh shit, Alec Baldwin, good hair, beautiful white silver fox hair. And he, uh, there was a moment where. Uh, He's like one of those old school stars where I feel like if you say if you talk shit to him, he'll like he'll like drop his phone and be like this. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, but totally. Some guy on the way out was like, "I love you," and he goes, "Thank you so much." <laughs> just walked out. <laughs> it's just like he's one of those like all or nothing. Like yeah. I feel like he's very debonair. If you're if you're if you're nice to him, he's just like very you know very like civilized. But if yeah. you mean, he's like got that Long Island and he wants to fucking take your head off. Right. Yeah, for sure. And uh, there's a video of him at the shooting range. All right. right. He turns around. He's like, I think I got it. (laughs) All right. Is this, this, just tell me if this has been done and I'll throw it in the garbage and take a shit on the trash and light it on fire. Not one of those trashes. No. Uh, I saw a little girl in Mexico, like a five-year-old girl, and she had the dolly, you know, as they do. It's like a... So the mom had a baby in a stroller, and she had a doll baby in a doll stroller, and they're both going. I was like, oh, that's cute. She's, like, mimicking the mom. But boys don't do that. You never see a boy with a briefcase, a pipe, and, like, a bottle of whiskey and a handgun and hitting a fake wife. That's funny. I mean, yeah, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm going hard with it, but I'm just saying. Yeah, like, kids do have fake guns, though, as kids. You have, like, a that, squirt gun and shit, but, like. That was the turn. The only yeah. thing you have, like, your dad is a gun. But yeah, yeah, or like uh, I'm trying to think what other shit kids have that could be funny. Like what's yeah, a women, dad? W- women thing? growing up would have like an easy bake oven. Exactly. They got a little kitchenette. They got a, they're playing house. They got a dollhouse. Well, it's funny because they'd be like, "Well, that's like outdated," and you're like, "Well, these kids playing cowboys and Indians. That's really outdated." You know? Oh, true, true. Like, yeah. I'm trying to think of like other. Uh... Yeah, what's a dad thing? A suit. 
You know, the kid's holding a fake newspaper. Right, right. He's uh, fake coffee. Yeah, he's uh, like the girls walk around with a doll. You know, you know, it could be a funny angle. Is like the shit that boys do. Like women, like your goals as a kid are on a, they're attainable. Like having a kid is, you could have that. Kids are wearing like sports jerseys. I'm like, you're not gonna play for the Thunder. Oh, that's you know a good I mean? angle. That's a good angle. Yeah, true. I guess kid could play sports though. You could play. They're sports, not gonna go pro. That's true. What else do kids do for like fantasy? Yeah, you have a kid. Help us out here. Yeah, man, I don't know. Because boys go, play they go games. to the moon. You don't know you've been getting drunk with us every week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not allowed near him. <laughs> but boys go, we go superhero, G.I. Joe, baseball. Like, it's bigger. Where, where this girl is like, I want a fucking baby doll. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a little more grounded. Yeah. Hmm. You want a baby. It's like, that's, it's also like a weird. It's such a weird thing to like. We tell women they could be whatever they want, and then when we get them as kids, we get them dolls, like a baby doll. But what if she wanted the baby doll? That's that's the other weird part. It's like, oh, these kids have an easy bake oven, but like she asked for it. I yeah, didn't... What are you gonna get a girl? Gloria Steinem book? She's right. four years old. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's a, there's a lot here. I think it's it's an interesting idea, yeah. but I don't know where to go with it. The Jersey thing's not bad. Something about like if you're a kid, you're uh, if you're. What else do girls like? Little girls play with it. I'm trying to think. So can you do the premise again? Just do it from the top. Uh, I saw a, a girl, like a five year old girl, next to her mom. The mom had a baby, a real baby, and a care and a stroller with a baby in it. Yeah. And the girl had a fake stroller with the doll baby in it. And I was like, "This is weird that you want it. This is the toy you want. You want to be like your mom, I guess. Uh, this is fun for you, and then Easy Bake Oven, like playing house. They literally play house with teacups and shit. But a boy doesn't mimic the dad. Yeah, he's not doing taxes. And- yeah, 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 yeah. Taxes is funny. But they do. There are a lot. You have to find the perfect angle because they do mimic the dad in a lot of ways, right? Like they'll have a fake little toy truck or something, you know? Oh, uh, like, yeah, so the, the truck. So, so there's stuff. You have to find the perfect angle. Like taxes is a funny angle. Yeah, taxes they're is good. They're not doing like. Something a kid would never to, do. The angle has to be like they're not doing the difficult stuff a father has to do. Right. Because motherhood is uh-huh. a difficult fucking job. Yeah. You're mimicking my pain almost yeah you're yeah. mocking me with this shit and this kid was an accident <laughs> you know maybe <laughs> but the doll was bought on purpose yeah. no kids like oh <laughs> hey maybe that's something that's maybe no kids like oh i had a doll on accident what the fuck maybe the angle- I'm, they're putting it in a fake dumpster <laughs> yeah <laughs> new york city garbage can yeah <laughs> they're hard to open you don't see like the boy doing shit his dad has to do to yes mom, yes where he's just like that's enough or something like that. Right, like someone's right. fighting with the mom or like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, because the mom will hire someone to watch the kids. You know, it's almost like, get this thing away from me. But the the girl wants the doll. Maybe that's the beauty of the doll is it doesn't do all the shit that, doll, that babies do. Yeah. Maybe the kid has a race car bed, but the dad doesn't have a race car. You're teaching the kids to be like, you're teaching the girls to be nurturing with these dolls. And like, we don't teach the boys. It's interesting. It's like, you don't teach... Yeah, that's why I think there's something here because look, it's a real brain twister. It's it's getting things are bubbling here. But uh, I got yeah, maybe the angle is like she's gonna grow up to be a mother. Then you see the kid with like a a toy gun, and you're like, man, I hope he doesn't get bullied. Oh like yeah, that. I don't know. right, I don't know. right. I don't know the angle yet, but it's I don't target either. rich. I mean, there's something here. It's, it's rich. Something here, yeah. yeah. Okay, I just gotta till that soil till I find a seed. All right, what Let do you got? See what I got. Hold on, I'm, I gotta look for a sec. Um. This one's going to take some precision. Got to figure out exactly what I'm trying to say. I got a lot of angles that I don't think are there yet. Hey, join um, the club. Is this something? My All girlfriend right. asked me, she's like, do you want to have sex with other people? And I was like, of course, you know? And, <laughs> I, said, and she was, I was like, don't you? And she said, no. But I said, but you find, you say you find guys attractive all the time. And she goes, yeah, but I don't want to have sex with them. I was like, well, that to me is weird. That's like, I see a movie poster that looks good. I want to see it. Mm-hmm. I'm not like, oh, that looks great, you know, for another man to enjoy. Oh, yeah. You know? That's good. Yeah, that's great. He should enjoy it. He should feel pleasure from the, I don't know, something there. Well, the problem with the movie thing is with sex is an attachment and emotional. There's not really an attachment and emotional with a movie. I like, like the holdovers. <laughs> it's oh. a tear. It made you cry. <laughs> Both of you guys are crying. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Because you think the sex thing is like too much. Like, yeah. Although I'll tell you this, you think it's not emotional or an attachment. You ever uh, watching a show with your partner and you go ahead? They're pissed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's good something point. to that. Good yeah. point. Interesting. If you think that's, that's not masturbating, connected, you didn't wait for me. That's that is masturbating. Yeah, you didn't save the nut for me. Right, right. The, uh, the, you didn't finish. That's, you that's finished a, without me. Finished without me. Yeah. yeah, that's a lounge song I'm working on. By the way, save the last nut for me. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you finished without me is something for sure. Do you remember Phil Hanley's line from his last special when he's like, um, "My girlfriend wants me." She's like, "Do you jerk off to me?" And he's like, babe, you know monogamy is my kink. <laughs> <laughs> Very relatable. That's funny. Louis had a, a joke about that. His was a lot rougher. He's like, what are you, fucking high? I can think of anything. I got fucking gnomes blowing me and eating my ass. You know, whatever. That was a, a Louis bit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I've rewatched some Louis. It's a, you can just buy it on his website. Yeah. Fucking great purchase. It's like the, all you get all five seasons for oh, like thirty yeah. bucks, and they're and I gotta it's watch killer, that. dude. Mm -hmm. It's just so good. Well, it's just no committee. It's just his fucked up brain. Do you see that Rick Rubin clip that's going around? What is that? I might have said it to you, maybe not. It's about uh, don't do art for the audience. You gotta do it a little for the audience. That's I mean, what that, I that's think. That's the interesting thing. Is like, okay, you're in a different field than us, Rick Rubin. Like, you know, all well, due he's, respect, he's only a advice. Shit. I, I, I for a sec, and he's but, not even an artist. Well, he, he makes stuff. But, he he but, produces art. But yeah, but I think the difference is he's like a Don King. Yeah, I mean he's except, he's except the white the Don on King. The other end. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's I, it, with us especially we focus group. Our That's stuff, true. Right? Stand up's so, different in that way. Stand up's different. Go ahead though. Go. To anyone, <laughs> and to do what you love, and to make things that you love, whatever it is. This is make, the clip make I your saw. favorite things. Be the audience. You be the audience. Make the thing for no, you. No, no. The Put audience. a diary entry. That was and, his big angle. He's like, I, I think to some degree he's right. I mean, I agree with it a little bit. Where it's like, yeah, make what you would want to see. I mean, that's we fucking wrote a movie together. It's a movie we would want to see, right? True. True. Yeah, I think that's it with the yeah with the glass. Any of these metrics of oh, which is better, like fun. the idea of the Oscars. Ah, it's not it. Uh, God damn, it went, it went viral. Saying, that's which, the only reason I bring it up. But it, it it brought a lot of thoughts into my head, and that's why I bring it up to you because I want to hear your take. Basically saying, don't do art for the audience. That's basically what Marvel is doing. It's just like explosions and superheroes and fun, and it's not art. It's just like, hey, this is catered to you, quick, easy, done, you leave. He's like, art should be like a diary entry. You show people, and don't worry about what they think. But ironically, if you open up enough they will like it more than they like the Marvel movie. That was the big takeaway. Yes and no, right? Like a diary entry. To me, that feels like the comics who are like, this is my therapy. And I'm like, cool, where's the joke? Ooh, I yes. Think, I think there's a middle ground where you can make it I personal, agree. but also make it for the audience. Like yes. make it you, but make it, I mean, that's what we're doing with jokes, right? This is our life and this is our perspective, but it's always going to be that. As long as you like stay, as long as you stay unpretentious with your comedy yeah. and you and you remember like I'm doing this for laughs I'm not doing this to make a point or to, to pander I mean the type of shit where people are like this should be a diary entry diary entries aren't inter aren't funny I mean unless yeah. you're like I got finger fucked by my dad you're like holy shit this is crazy my favorite part of the Anne Frank book yeah. but <laughs> yeah. yeah but they're not it's not great entertainment no i mean that's that's one chapter out of the diary not one chapter one snippet it's not the full book the full book is like i went to school today and i talked to tommy and he's cute and oh boy i got excited and then oh i got a tummy ache that ain't good art i agree that being said there is like a type of movie where it like feels where the dialogue feels very real yeah right and and that is like a genre where you're like okay well this isn't like a movie where the dialogue's meant to be snappy this is meant to be truthful and that's fine that that's cool yeah you know, i feel like noah Baumbach will make movies like that oh, where, yeah. right where it's like this is supposed to feel real there's a movie called columbus a few years ago and that was like mm. another good with john cho and i uh forgot the actress's name she's really good but there's movies like that where the point is to be real and uh but it's still got to be good. It's like you said, you need a middle Absolutely. ground. It's like Barbie. Barbie's a perfect example. I don't I don't know how good it was, but like it's huge numbers. People love it. It's blowing up. It's number 1 on HBO now. It's number 1 yeah. in the theaters. Made more money than any movie in the last couple of years, whatever. But it's it's Greta Gerwig and then 
Noah Baumbach wrote it together, but they wrote it to be a little more mainstream, and they're very kind of alty indie directors. Yeah, and they wrote it. They they met in the middle. They wrote it to be mainstream, but you have their talents, but still channeling it through this kind of mainstream vehicle. Yeah, and I think that's why it's so good or so big. Big. I didn't like it personally. Uh, I know I'm probably not the target demo for that movie. Sure, but like. It looked beautiful. There's a lot of cool things about it, but like it just, I didn't think it was funny or, or witty, to be honest. Yeah, I, I didn't just like, think it was that funny. I thought it had moments of like, yeah. oh, that's a clever turn, and that's, that's an interesting uh, look on that, but uh, I'm with you, but I'm just saying, like, I think you got to meet in the middle. Yeah, I mean, look, that was like for the masses. That's what it was yes. for, and that's, and that's fine if that's what you're trying to make, right? Like, it would be weird if they made like an indie Barbie film. You know, that would be weird, too, right? Oh, God, that would be weird. So, She's a cutter. You know? <laughs> She's cutting plastic, and it won't bleed. Winona Ryder. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's... Uh, I don't know, man. It's... Uh... Lena Dunham as Barbie. <laughs> She's all fat and tatted up. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean... But I think that's a good bit. Yeah, I just think you need... You need it to be you, or else it's not going to have an original spin on it. But, like... I. I've seen the comics that, that are like, this is my diary entry, and I want to fucking leave the room. It's I know, not, I it's know. It's not funny. I'm with you. We watched that shit, like, we came up in that alt boom. Yes. And we saw those guys kind of blow up. I was like, I don't think this motherfucker can play Idaho. Oh, God, no. You know, like, I don't think this person can play America. I think you're killing in Brooklyn. Yeah. But it's not, and it's cool that, like, you know, the guys coming up that we liked, like Louie, were like, or a tell. I thought they could kill any of them. Anywhere. A funny joke's a funny joke, and it doesn't have to be this heartfelt, open, vulnerable thing. And that's great. But that great. can be done well. That can be done well, it, but... There, there's a skill in that as well, but... It's still called comedy. Yeah. And what comedy means funny, jokes, laughs, and there, no one's laughing. So, like, what are we doing here? But there are a lot of different types subjective. of comedies, and there's a lot of different... You know, it's like you can make a heartfelt comedy, and you yeah. can, or you can make like a punchy comedy, a, yeah. a dirty comedy. There's so much type of shit you can make, you know? Yeah, but I think if you're standing in front of an audience that paid to see you uh, in Cleveland, they got to be entertained or laughing, or you're you're failing. Does Rick Rubin create music, or is he a producer? I mean, what is he... He's a producer. I, I saw an interview with him. It was 60 Minutes. He was like, I can't play an instrument. He goes, I just know what I like. And, and he's barefoot. So I can find that for you. And uh, he's got a an beard. Yeah. I just know what I like. Uh, not shaving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And shoes. I hate shoes. <laughs> I hate shoes. No, I, I think there's obviously a skill in that. There's a skill in yeah. being a great producer. But also, it is weird when people that aren't creators are like, this is how you create. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're an observer or an observer of creating. Like, you know, you work with like the BC Boys. And who else did he work with? I mean, he's, he's got an amazing- Oh, all list. these rappers. Uh, Jay-Z. There's an amazing video of him like working out- a song with Jay Z, Tom Petty, oh, uh, Ninety Nine Problems. He's like, we should do acapella in the beginning. You know, you know the song. Like, sure, yeah. Ninety Nine Problems. Jay Z originally said it should be One Hundred and One Problems, and he was like, <laughs> no, it should be Ninety Nine. <laughs> Guru. <laughs> All right. I'm not saying he doesn't know his stuff, but I do think if he didn't look like that, nobody would listen to him. Yeah. I think if he had a suit on and a, and a part in his hair, I think no one would give a fuck. And I think he knows that. But. Oh, Don't play it. Everybody knows 99 Problems. Right. But the point is... Yeah, I wish you asked if I knew that song. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know the, the, the movie... Uh, do you know the movie Oppenheimer? <laughs> yeah. I've heard of it. Rick yeah. Rubin produced that. <laughs> Did he? No, I'm joking. I mean, you never know. You never know. fucking movies. He's got his hand in everything. And I think now he's just good to have your... It's good to have his name on shit. Like, he's gone that far where he's like this legend status. And I'm not saying he doesn't know his shit. I'm just saying... I don't think he understands... All of it. He still needs the artist. He couldn't make something on his own. He still he. It's it's one thing to be able to listen to an artist, and be like, change that, change this, change that. I'm a genius. Yeah, but you couldn't have done it without them. But also yeah. being able to pull something out of somebody sure. is, is a magical trait, and uh, what a producer does in music, yeah. at least. Yeah. And I think he does that really well. No, there are legendary producers, and I and I've been around producers where I'm like, I I see I see that where yeah. they they have a definite talent, but uh. Yeah, I don't know, but there's also a lot of producers who stink and leech and leech on the fucking people more talented than them, and then try to fuck them over. Yeah, so, there's definitely that. There's but a lot. To me, this is kind of like when a lady says, "Like I love funny guys," and you're like, "Yeah, but you're not blowing uh, Chris Farley," you know? I hope not now. Well, yeah, that'd be a that'd dirty, be a bad blowjob, dirty bony blowjob. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, yeah, you do love funny guys as long as they're six one, rich and fit. 
like this homeless guy could be hilarious. And like I'm being extreme here. I'm generalizing. <laughs> yeah, you put your money where your mouth is. Suck off that homeless yeah. guy. <laughs> <laughs> but the the thing of like, hey, it's got to be a diary entry, and it's like, yeah, yeah. But there's there are diary entries that are super boring, and and uh, there's nothing there. So yeah. like. You can't just say that and have it be the we're, end all be all. We're fighting the indulgence of a diary entry. That's like I think what bothers us is that like someone like you, you're honing your shit. Yeah. You're taking so much care in it. You're like kind of like searching. I've watched you for years. I've watched Mark for so long, like trying to figure out bits. And I think when he says that, I think Mark is his reaction. I get angry. You're annoyed because you're annoyed. Like, no, nah, it's more than that. Yeah. It's more than a fucking diary. A diary entry is like stream of consciousness. It's self-indulgent. Right, and right. And it's like, okay, done. It took eight minutes. Yeah. I think- I think uh, There's no fine-tuning. I think no we're editing. reading into it. Uh, look, that, any quote, you're going to read into it the way you read into it, but I, I I feel the same way as you. All right, I appreciate it. But that's why I brought it up, because I think it sparks yeah. a good debate. It's like when you guys say in comedy, it's like, well, that was your first thought. You got, got to get past that. Yeah. Get past the first thought. Go to your second or third. That's why you write a screenplay eight times, because it keeps getting better and better. I mean, sometimes you get overwrite. But yeah, I think with this, the diary entry thing, you're like, it's still Louis, everybody's, Richard Pryor is so honest. That's why he's great. He's honest. Yeah, but he's also fucking hilarious. I know. So we can't just go, oh, he's, he lit his hair on fire. I can't just go out and go, hey, I lit my hair on fire. Honesty is not funny. Here, it's not funny. Here's the guy it being honest. Be I have AIDS. <laughs> I guess that's that is funny. funny. That was, funny. That was, that was good. Okay, funny. honesty is funny. I take it back. Take honesty it is back. good. But I, I remember Jim Norton had the great point of like um, someone called in to Jim and Sam when I was on. We he made a fat joke or something, and somebody was like, "You think making you think fat people are funny?" And he's like, "Well, no, I made it funny. If I see a four, uh, a seven hundred pound guy on the street, I'm not like that's hilarious." Same with Seinfeld. A toothbrush isn't funny, but he made right, it funny. Right, right, right. And I'm like, that's Nothing's a great point. Nothing's inherently funny. Nothing's inherently funny. And a diary entry isn't inherently interesting. So it's still got to be good. I think that's the problem with a lot of these podcasts now is that people are speaking in absolutes. Yes. And, and you know, you're like, this is this is a secret sauce right here. Right. They're trying to sound interesting. There is no secret sauce. Right. You figure out for yourself. This is a trial and error pursuit. I mean, you're going on stage and you slip and you fall on your face. You're like, that one's not funny. Yeah. Then you go to the next one. And see if you slip and fall. There's no secret to this. There's no And here's what I want Rick Rubin to do. If we're really uh, where the rubber meets the road, he, he, he links up with Tom Petty. Hey, Tom Petty, I'm Rick Rubin. I'm a legend. I have no shoes on. Let me come over and uh, and work with you. We'll do a new album. Well, and I'll Tom be Tom Petty's Petty. No dice, dude. You got to wear shoes to my place. No shoes, no service. Oh, yeah. I'm to do that one. All right. But my point is, take Salacuse, who's never written a, a comedy hour in his life, and go, well, you're actually kind of funny. So let me, like, let's take Salacuse and go, you're going to be a model. Right. Next male oh, model. Yeah. That's hurtful. That, to me, would be like, oh, shit, this guy is fucking talented. He can take... The ugliest man in New York. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he can take this guy and make him the I'm next big thing. For me. Sorry, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. I, you know, he's gonna make you an NBA star, you yeah. know, or whatever. Like that. That would be like, okay, Rick Rubin is a fucking genius. He took this guy and made him play for the Knicks. That's me right there. That's you. Yeah. Look yeah. up some footage. This dude was yeah. a fuck. Pull up Kurt Rambis. This guy was a fucking goon. He's an NBA champion, dude. Yeah. He was a bad motherfucker. He was a terrible front office guy for the Knicks. But uh Kurt Rambis. By the way, the Knicks just made a move for OG on an OB, dude. I'm fucking hyped. Who's that? This guy we got from Toronto. We had to trade RG RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. It's tough to see the young guys you love go, but Yeah, Barrett was doing well. And quickly was like looking great. But this guy only OG on an OB is like he's like a game changer. He's okay. like a shutdown defender. I'm fucking Hyped. Well, we thought that about Zion when we got him on the Pelicans, and that didn't. Uh... This is didn't change much. Oh, that was a nasty fall. Well, they hated each other. The Celtics. Oh. The Celtics. And... Uh... <laughs> Maybe that is you, Celtics. <laughs> I mean, he, he looks like Howard Stern. Well, what's going on here? Well, he's tall as shit, huh? He's big. He's like six seven, probably six eight. Wow. He was. Uh... Was he out of Philly, Boston? No, Lakers, right there. No, but I mean, where he from? Oh, oh I don't know. Uh, he uh, yeah, he was a, a tough guy though for sure. I mean, like, oh, is that him now? Yeah. Oh wow, he's hanging in there. Yeah, he's uh, he was. I think he was the next coach for a minute. Maybe what? He, was assist, he was definitely assistant. Terre Haute. Where the hell's that? Indiana. 
Oh, uh, a lot of Indiana boys. He's a lot of fed white Who's guy. Larry, baby? Larry Bird, right? Mm-hmm. French Lick? Yeah. I Damn. mean, uh, fuck, Larry Bird was so cold, man. Oh. So cool. I'm not even the biggest NBA guy. I've watched montages of Larry Bird just because all the guys are like, you watch these uh, Johnson, uh, Michael Jordan, they're all just like, Larry Bird was a problem. He yeah. was crazy. I mean, NBA would not be the NBA without Larry Bird and Magic Johnson because they're beef. Like, you need a rivalry. You need yeah. that, You need people to care. You need drama. And they fucking hated each other. And then they became boys. It's awesome. Great NBA story. Great documentary on them on HBO. I forgot the name of it. but uh, Oh, really? Yeah, it's that. a great doc on, on Bird and Matt. I mean, yeah, look at that shit. Wow. He was just crushing dudes. He's kind of innovative. Oh, look at that. Look back. at it behind the back. Dude, he was so good. And he could dunk. He did everything. Oh, he's just breaking ankles. Uh, you ever heard the story about what he said when he, he walked up to everybody at the three point contest and he goes, Which one of y'all are coming in second? Oh. Uh, oh. Damn, he was fucking money. I mean, Boston, could he? Boston needed this guy. Oh, yeah. A tall, blonde, white guy. There's the other story about him, and I don't know if it's true because it's, it's one of those like legendary stories about him rolling into a bar in Boston. They're like, Larry, don't you have a big game tomorrow? And he goes, Why don't you let Larry Bird worry about Larry Bird? Ooh. I heard the story about Satchel Page, where he uh, would get the ball on the mound and he would look at the opposing bench and he'd be like, all right, who wants to hit today? And if you spoke up, you actually got the hit that day. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Which is, uh, what, is that Woody Allen's kid? No. <laughs> no, no, he's got a kid named Satchel. Yeah, Satchel, that turned into Ronan Farrow. What? He changed what? his name? His name? Or, no, Satchel is the girl. What's her name? Oh, the girl. is that the girl? Okay. The girl that, uh, Damn, these shots are stupid. Dylan. Dylan. You, you know yeah. what Bird used to do? He used to tell the player, guarding him where he was going and still hit the shot. Wow. You see, I'm going right here. Just so you know, just to like as an extra layer of talking shit. Wow. Oh, look, and the other team is fucking. They're dying. <laughs> That's like that meme where they go, oh. Yeah. Uh, he was bad. I mean, this was a cool era, man. I mean, I, I'm so grateful I came up in the 90s, like watching the 90s Knicks and shit. They were just, they never won, but they were just so fucking cool. Yeah. yeah. Cool to watch. All right. We got Rhombus. We got Larry, but we got to talk about a black player. This is getting weird. Uh, well, about the, the 90s Knicks, they were oh, yeah. Ewing, Oaks, Okay. Starks. That was my, those are my guys. The Knicks right now are fucking awesome. All we right. Gotta, we got to hit a game, man. I would love to go to a game. All right. We got to hit it. And then we, who, who are they getting? Netanyahu? What's the guy? <laughs> OG on a Nobi. Nobi. Oh, look yeah. at those guys. Look at the flat top, baby. Xavier McDaniel. Yeah, dude. Uh, Knicks are stacked right now. We're That's looking someone good. he loves right there. That's a big arm. That's love, dude. That's LJ and John Starks. I had them both on my show and I had an MSG show. Really? What? Yeah, dude. They were both cool as shit. I think it's about that time for an Asian player, by the way. We had Linsanity. We had Linsanity and we had Yao Ming. Not we, but moment. he was out there. Ming was sick, but he, injuries derailed him. Ah, uh, you know they got the two tallest people in China to fuck. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, that's how they made Yao Ming pull it up. No, no, they, no way. That's. I mean, is there anything more China than that? <laughs> <laughs> how, how am I supposed to look that up? <laughs> Did China get the two tallest people? It's a long <laughs> Google. No way. <laughs> I, I I put money on it. He's seven five. You know the great seven story five. about pull up the Shaq clip where he where he talks after this. Where he talks shit about Yao okay. Ming. It's all right. Zhu Yan was taken to the state's grueling basketball training grounds and paired with something something Fang Fang Di, a former Reds guard, to give birth to a two meter tall human being. Damn, Mark, that's a weird ass story. <laughs> I really like <laughs> eugenics. Okay, so now go to now go YouTube uh, Shaq shitting on Yao Ming because I remember like Shaq could not stand him at first, and it, this story gets funnier and funnier because like I fucking love the it NBA. Says Shaq dude. on Yao Ming yeah, racist that one. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking. Oh it's shit, it's hilarious. Oh this shit, here, this one here. I don't know. Shaq on Yao Ming racist. Hip off Friday night. The organization oh, totally Chinese Americans hair. will hold a press conference in front of the compact. I love loves Houston comedy. To condemn Shaq's show. pigeon you English. No. He's great. Yeah. Oh, stop us, dude. <laughs> Wang Zhu, whatever your name is, you want some of Shaq food? <laughs> Come get it. I'll be waiting for you. That could have been a lot worse. No, there's a worse one coming. There's another one. Neil that said he was joking bad. and has since apologized there's a, there's for offending anybody, one. but the... Remember the famous chink in the armor headline? For Jeremy Lin, yeah. Yeah. That, that guy fired. It was the right expression, though. I know. It's like when I a know. guy got fired for using the the word niggardly, but it was like, that means stingy. It's not like a fucking... Yeah. Oh, Mark's melting. It's in the dictionary. Yeah. I looked it up. 
I guess there's a time and place. You, but yeah, Shaq, <laughs> Shaq yeah, there's another one where he's like, tell uh, Yao Ming, Ching Chong, what, it was bad. Oh. And then later, like, uh, Shaq went to like visit his family. Like he was like, "Fuck yeah, it was pretty cool." Oh, and then yeah, wow. his parents were like, "You're his favorite player," and he was like, oh, "I'm a fucking dickhead." Ah, <laughs> but it's but funny. Uh, but uh, you know, yeah, you- yeah, was sick. Yeah, it was great. And it just shows you can say something, and it doesn't mean you hate an entire race of nah, people. He's fucking around. He's he, fucking he around. Just made a mistake. Shaq seems like the night. Nice- Shaq would be a. He's a dream guest on this pod. Yeah, oh. I feel like there was a there was. A, I mean, we need a. You're gonna have to sit on my side of the couch. Probably. I would love it. But Shaq is like he's up there with. We said Charlie Sheen. Shaq is a dream guest. Good point. Shaq would be fucking awesome. Yeah, he would. I, he would get drunk with us. Yeah, I think we got John Ham. We need Ham. We got Sheen and Shaq. How are we looking on John Ham? Every now and then I get a message, but nothing looks solid. I think it's possible. We need Ham. Yeah, Mark and I. We won't wear suits, but we will drink old fashions. Yes, yes. You better fucking wear suits for ham. We got to wear a suit for ham. You wear. Suits. I'll wear a Mad suit. Men in this motherfucker. Is it too much to go? <laughs> when he walks in <laughs> and don't break eye contact. Yeah. <laughs> we both just stare at him. Ah, ham, we want ham. Do 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 do. The guy falling. Oh, I've seen it too many times. Rules. It's the best. We'll get Christina Hendricks in here to serve us. Oof. Cooper. Damn. Slap her on the she ass. Was fucking, she was pretty special. Oh, that's a full-figured gal. She's a great character, too. Just great like character. Joan. Hard. Love Joan. Yeah. Joan is like like Liz of the Cellar. Yes. She's like a badass and just fucking... Yeah, Gee, I mean, this is Jessica Rabbit uh, personified she here. She is gorgeous. You know who she was married to for a while? Who? Good Lord. That guy from Super Troopers? Oh, really? Get yes. the fuck out of here. Yeah, wait till you see which one. The Indian one? Yes! Oh, I would say his name, but it's like 38 letters. No, no, not that one. Oh, well, there's only one Indian one. <laughs> no, he's like a side character. Uh, Farva? No. Nope. Can't be Farva. The guy in the car. I can't pull over anymore. This guy. Get the fuck. Married. What the hell is going on? <laughs> I okay. can't handle it. I mean, he's divorced, Mark. What are we going to do here? I mean, I mean, I, I just can't imagine these two. I mean, this is the oddest couple on the <laughs> Jeffrey Aaron. I mean, good for him. I mean, no, they, they're divorced, so not good for him. Well, just that he pulled it. Hey, he's from uh, the Big Island. Hey. Hey. Wow. That guy went up to her at a fucking event and spit some game. He and said, that rack of lamb oh, yeah. is one of the finest I've ever seen. This should be a Hall of Fame thing on this show. Hall of Fame of guys who, who punched up and won. Yeah. That's, inc- that's well, is, incredible. He's divorced. Is that winning? or is it, I mean, are we just taking into account that- That's a win. He had that's a hell a of a win. ride. That's a, Hall that's Hall a win. win for life. I'm sure they went through hell with the divorce. It was grueling and sad and painful, but he- Titty fucked her on a yeah. Tuesday in March, and that's all that matters. <laughs> that was a fucking good Tuesday. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I bet, he, I bet he did on a Wednesday, too. Yeah, probably. That will never be I forgotten. Was, uh... <laughs> like 9-11 What, what was that? Holocaust. John Hamm just uh, saying, I, no thanks, just I don't want to come on yeah. anymore. <laughs> 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 Can you not talk about uh, my, titty, my co-star getting titty fucked? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, now where are you on titty fucking? You ever done it? Yeah, I like it. I don't get it. If the tits are really big, it's pretty fun. Yeah, you I guess lube so. them up a little bit, throw some lotion on there. I just feel weird, and then you're looking at her, and you can tell she's not. Well, yeah, maybe you get a little licking while you're going on while you're, that, while you're doing that it. That helps. There's, way, there's ways to make titty fucking work. All right. Look, it's not like it's not my first option. Sure, sure. But uh, yeah, it's, it could okay. be fun. I think it's one of those like porno things where it like looks hotter than it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm two in my head with with shit like that. I, I just see her and I, I know I want to give her pleasure. And obviously, it's just skin on skin for her. It's not yeah. like a pleasurable area. Well, some women do get off giving pleasure. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So, and I get I get off giving pleasure. There you go. I was uh, really doing a porno thing with the wife. <laughs> the uh, you know the squirt up move, and she was going nuts. And I, yeah, obviously, it's just my finger. But I was like. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's you, when you we had your to, wife to squirt? I did, and we had to really get out of that Forever 21. But, uh, <laughs> at the time, no wonder she was sick in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she was dehydrated. <laughs> I, like my, my, I like to do a character where I, I don't know how to finger, and I'm just going, I'm just going like this. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I first like, met with a, gr- guy, with a girl. I was like 13 or whatever, and I was fingering her like this. 
<laughs> I'm like I'm like hitting the pubes. I'm not even in the bottom area. Well, just... There's no like porn is really like I guess where you're educated. Like they have sex ed in school, but like you learn shit from porn, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, porn. That's why I always finish by coming out a woman's face. <laughs> oh my I learned all, that's my sex education. Yeah, Winnie just perked up on that one. Well, Winnie, yeah, Winnie liked that. <laughs> But it, Sometimes I miss and I shoot a load on money. Oh, that's no. what so sad. <laughs> yeah. That's what the eyes are. Ah, that's a better oh, joke. Peter, Peter, the, the slam, the put back dunk. Yeah, the Yao Ming. Um, she is so fucking cool, this dog. Yeah. I do love it. I so, met an Asian guy. I forgot. I met an Asian guy in New Orleans one night at my wedding. The night we went out after, and there was this tall Asian dude, and he was so funny. He was just like fucking killing everybody at the bar, and I called him Yao Zing. It's the highlight <laughs> of my great. life. Yeah. Did yeah. you write that? <laughs> you just come up with that? Just come up with that. <laughs> I came up with it then. Yeah. Your wedding, man. I remember those like that burger spot in New Orleans. Oh was, yeah, that was clutch. That was my friend Ron. It uh, shout out to Bub's it. Burgers. He killed it. Yeah, he showed um, up with a pan. So I feel like we're coming to an end here. So, yeah. But we have a listener submitted song. Oh wow! I like to By play. the way, can I before we even play it, we have the best fucking listeners. Yeah. I, 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 it blows my mind the amount of like creativity they send in these incredible creative things. They're always tweeting uh, movies at me. Yes. They just someone just hit me with the movie Lone Star. I've never seen it. I'm gonna watch it. Lone Star. Yeah, it's from the '90s. It was like he was like, "You like neo noir? Check this out." I look it up. It looks great. Really? Yeah. It's uh. Chris Cooper's a star. Oh, yeah, is Cooper. it kind of like a uh, what was that one Jeff Bridges did, where he's like a singer, Crazy kinda, Heart. Crazy Heart. Is it like that? No, but that was great. That was fun. Jeff Bridges, fucking legend. He's dude. the man, and especially as a comic, he was like a road vet. He was older. He was a drunk. Yeah, that was like that had a lot of comedy. Uh, oh, parallels. Yeah, yeah. You're you're in a bowling alley. Right, right. Sorry, so, go ahead. I'm here's a little song. Up. What's so it, let's what's encourage people to send more stuff. Chris. Yeah, we should highlight send it a little stuff. more. Too. Yeah, we'll highlight. We love highlighting John people. Bryant. John Ryan, Brian, Brian, John Bryant. Here we go, John. It was already a John Bryant. This one's for you. Hey, hey, hey folks, we might be drunk. Really drunk. This is a New Orleans tune. This ba, 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 da, hey, sampling. Hey, folks, we might be drunk. Shit face. White stole from uh, black folk. Comedy. <laughs> That's just like a. He just made like a little remix. Fuck you, John. <laughs> no, I liked it. I was fun. That was fun. Uh, all right. It was fun. But that was a New Orleans uh, send off there. Did we get a gift we have to open here? I have to all right. Let's check it out. Okay. What the hell's that? Might be the car. For a good time. Uh oh. Spread freaks. Dick fuel. Oh, this guy. When can we start vrooming? I think it's a motorcycle company. Oh my god! Some fucking good for a good time. Scan this. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Eighteen <laughs> plus. Right. That freaks me out. So I get a fucking calendar in the mail uh, from Germany. It's some what? dude ass. Nate, I, which I hate that people know where I live. He sends <laughs> me it's a calendar. He's at, I first off, I thought it was Stavro sent it to me, and I was like, "Crack!" I was like, "Oh, Stav sent me a calendar." I was like, "I'll use it. That'll be funny to me," you know. But it's just some dude's ass uh, for every month. I'm like, "This is this sucks." Wow, it sucks to get a shitty gift, and you this dude knows my address. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Ooh, the address thing is is I worrisome. Don't love it. Yeah. It's like the black dick guy. Remember that guy? Yeah. R.I.P. He's but dead? He died. Yeah, Mark and I fought to use him. Like, yes! we, got, we basically got shut down in our script. We wanted to use a joke. And the jo- it was a dumb, like, it was a throwaway joke. But it was literally, I think it was me or Mark showing the other one our phone about this, like, event. And it was just a black guy's dick. Uh-huh. And they were like, that guy's dead. I'm like, but it's still fun. And everybody knows it. Yeah. But that maybe that makes us like NC seventeen or something. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. But he was like pretty adamant, like don't use. Those. I was like, we were laughing at. Yeah. It. We just thought that was like a funny. Yeah. How often do you said, never not funny. You someone's like, it oh fuck, this kid's dying. Please donate to the charity, and you click on it, it's a black <laughs> dick. Yeah. Uh, I love the idea. We're like salt burn, too much dick, a little, a little <laughs> much. We can't get this black dick in the movie. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Comedy's different. Artsy That's movie, a good point. Artsy movies, it's like... Because dicks are funny. Dicks are funny. They're not artsy. And, and farts are funny. But like, doing it, it, like, it was like under the guise of like, you know, a dude just fucking... 
Hey, that movie bugged me. I I, I don't know. Well, it was it was uh, shocking enough to get get you talking. You know, sure. And to that, I give credit. You know, like I get it, but I also just because you're talking doesn't mean it worked. But yeah, I think this person like visually knows what they're doing. She's got a incredible oh, beautiful, eye, and, beautiful and the picture. acting was awesome. But I just like, you know. I thought it was a little hollow, too. I mean, I don't very, want to shit on this person's hollow, movie, you know, hollow. but it's like, we love this one guy, you know, and, but, and then, like, the Venetia character was a little flat. I kind of liked her. I, I mean, I liked her, but I feel like there wasn't a ton there. I don't know. It didn't, and they, they, they support the black kid, and he's, like, the, the, the one they help, and then they turn on, I don't know, I just felt a little, um, been done, a little rote. It just felt like, yeah, like a little underdeveloped. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. But, 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 you know, well done. And they, they pulled it out. I, I'm, I have this like, you know, I guess I go toward movies instead of TV shows because you're in and out. But then at that point, you know, you lack development. Like these TV shows can develop a character for Like you can develop a character further than you can a movie because you do over, over seasons as opposed to over 90 minutes to two hours, whatever. But, yeah, I don't know. There we go. I think you've done such a good job on this episode of like, I'll rant and rave about horse shit, and then you succinctly uh, put it in a nice package, <laughs> in a nice sentence. Here's my s- package on this movie. The most interesting parts were just the shocking parts, whereas the plot itself wasn't exactly that uh, clever. I feel like they earned it more. It's very similar to Talented Mr. Ripley, and I feel like they earned it more in that one. There you go. They they earned the shock, and they earned the... Uh, they built to it more. It was kind of just like too neat as opposed to like it was messy in Ripley and it should be messy. Yeah, it should be messy. That shit is fucking messy. Yeah. Uh, that's a great fucking book too. If you haven't read Talented Mr. Ripley, man, Patricia Highsmith is a fucking- Is it a series she, or is it just one book? I feel like it's- It's a series. It's a series, okay. But oh. the first one is like the masterpiece. You know, yeah, it's like Ripley's Game and stuff. There's oh, other- Right. But like uh, Talented Mr. Ripley is like- Epic man, she's so good. she wrote Strangers on a Train. She wrote, oh like, wow, yeah, she's a fucking legend. Oh, wow. Yeah, great, great uh, suspense writer. Uh, but if if you took the the period blood and the grave fucking out, would people be talking about it? That's my that's point. That's a good point. That's my point. And it's just a lot of beautiful people, right? Like the, the right. main guy. The main guy. The guy, is he stunning. is a handsome fucker. Handsome, dude. That like, guy, pretty he's like, guy. He's like the it guy now. I yeah. forgot it. Jacob Alori, is that his name? Yeah. Alordi, yeah. Alordi. He's like eight feet tall, you know, pretty pretty boy face. He's got it all. He's a handsome kid. But now that people are talking about the uh, the Irish guy. Who's that? Oh, the, the main the, guy. The, the Barry, yeah. Well, he's like, a very good actor. I mean, that is a traditionally unattractive man. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, but talent goes a long way. It man. does. You and know? the cock didn't you hurt. You said the same shit about uh, Adam Driver. Yeah, I mean, traditionally unattractive, but I like him. I'd blow him. But is the, cock, is the cock actually big? Because he's like, what, 5'4"? <laughs> That's true. I mean, you know. It, it's weird. He gets so Irish, it's almost Asian. You know what I mean? <laughs> if, you, if you go far enough, it goes into Korean. Pe- penis and everything. Well, the penis was big. He oh. wasn't bad, yeah. I he's think... tiny, so you're like, is it big? That's the question. Right. He clearly fluffed. Did he? I think so. We got to fluff in our movie. Oh, I'll be fluffing. I'll be fluffing, too. I fluff Should we fluff this. each other? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll play it by ear. We'll, we'll hire a fluffer. <laughs> be suck if you get a dude fluffer. <laughs> You're like, wait, that's I'm, not the picture. I'm the, <laughs> yeah. I'm the fluffer. We should do a uh, flubber remake with fluffer. <laughs> okay. I can't stop fluffing. <laughs> uh, should we plug some dates? Hell yeah. Where are you going to be, man? All right. I'm in Tampa, I think this weekend, coming up. Tampa Theater? Where are you? Tampa Theater. Beautiful. Oh, we added a show. Beautiful theater. Um, Where are Yeah, you? Tampa Theater. Oh, great. Two shows. And then Jacksonville, nice. Florida, at the Florida Theater, which will, that is not selling great, but hopefully by this time it'll sell out. Indianapolis, speaking of Larry Bird. Egyptian uh, Room? Uh, Klaus Memorial Hall. Hmm. Whatever that is. Uh, Shirk on Columbus, Ohio, January 19th. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Davidson Theater, Columbus, Ohio. Then the Beacon Theater, New York City, added a show. First one sold out. Hallelujah. Punch-Up. Danny from Punch-Up, I think, really helped. He's the best. Danny Frankel, shout out. Love him. Night Theater in Charlotte, North Carolina. Lexington Opera House. Uh, San Antonio. Houston. 
Uh, Salt Lake City, Boise, Idaho, when Atlanta. When you Salt Lake City, what we? That is uh, February 16th. Ah, we just missed each other. 17th, yeah. Are you there before? No, right after you. Uh-oh, I'm, I'm swooping in early, stealing your tickets, <laughs> a lot of crossover. Atlanta, Raleigh, uh, Austin, uh, we're going to add a show there. Tucson, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, Charlottesville, Charlotte. Uh, Albuquerque, El Paso, to name a few. MarkNormanComedy.com. Get Bodega Cat. The theater there is really fun, man. Very it's fun a, theater. Fun city. Doing that with the fat Chris Allen. That'll be fun. We'll do it up. Come on out. New material. What do you got? I got uh, Philly this weekend. We did, we just added a show. So uh, What room? Punch. I'm doing the punchline. I'm doing clubs again. Oh, man. shit. Yeah, yeah. It should be fun. We just had a, a late Sunday uh, little Gary's gonna be there with me. Won't Woo! bring the gun. Stanford, Connecticut. I think that that might be gone, but that was uh, a fun. That's a, supposed to be a fun room. Dania Beach. Nice. That's a uh, fun one. Yeah, Omaha. All fun rooms. Uh, Dallas, the Addison Improv. Uh, we got uh, Oklahoma City, OKC Comedy Club, and then we got Irvine, February twenty third through the twenty fifth. That's that's moving well. And then we got uh, Salt Lake City the following week uh, at uh, Wise Guys Comedy Club, February 29th through March second. And the following weekend is the taping at the Wilbur Baby. I'm excited. Whoa! Uh, I think that's that's gone. I think, but it's uh, wow. It but, says uh, tickets available for the late show. Oh, late show on, on Thursday, maybe. All right, Jesus, cool. yeah. that'll sell. I mean, you got two months to sell that. Topic. Oh yeah, yeah, it's you'll be fine. Be, and uh, and I think we're being cautious with kills right now, so we might open up a few more. But uh, okay, but who knows? Uh, hate the kills. I hate the kills too. Yeah, come on. They always overkill. They overkill. It's annoying. But uh, good, I'm, good I'm good pumped to tape that one. I'm sick of the material. Uh, I'm just like I've been doing it too long. It's a th- killer hour. More. Thank I, you, man. I saw it. Whatever the hell JFL was. That was a while back. Man, that was a tough crowd, though. That was a tough crowd. I they thought, were drunk as shit. I got off and I was like, ah, I could have done better. And then you you didn't like it. And I was like, all right, good. No, you were great. And then we ha- and then I was like, insurance. I was like, man, I, this guy won't stop heckling me. I'm bringing out Norman, <laughs> Ian Laura, and Brad Williams. And having, having a little guy out there. Yeah. Just a little slam dunk for riffing. But uh, yeah, keep listening to uh, the pod, Bodega Cat, Whiskey. A lot of people... Uh, message us about how great the set designs have been lately on this show. Oh, like yes. The have Matt Peters. Pete. Best in the game. Just crushing it. Really the best. Amazing. Gotham Studios. Hell yeah. Gotham Studios crushing it. Uh, okay. He's doing so many pods here. Henrik Lundqvist from the fucking Rangers Whoa. has a pod here. He's killing it. So, uh, Natalie yeah. Cuomo. Natalie Cuomo, Andy Haynes. And and if, you, if you're in New York and you need a podcast studio on the fly, call up Gotham. This guy's got some good some good mics here. Yeah, do you plug in anything, Salakis? No, I'm all good. Uh, Winnie will be eating chocolate later tonight. So you <laughs> no, uh, she's crushing, dude. All right, well, this has been awesome, and uh, we love you guys. Keep listening, and uh, fuck yeah. See, yeah. You, see you soon. Thank you. Sunday's the day for my next bender. A bit of fever wreck, you know the beer juice close. I've had a little too much bourbon, and Norman's talking shit about the fucking post. Here in New Orleans, this woman doesn't look like I remember her.